All right, so I am really excited to do this run. As the title probably says in some form, this is a priest run. It is going to be 10 to 60. And the one thing that I've changed from what I promised is I initially said in my last run that it was going to be a Void Elf. And I decided I want to do Dark Iron just because Dark Iron is more consistent. And I don't know how many Alliance test runs I'm going to do. So we're doing a Dark Iron Priest. But the main thing that many people have asked me to test is priest leveling in general. I've never done a priest speed run. And I've barely ever played Shadow, which is what we're going to be playing for most of this run. Now, I did initially promise a Shadow Priest speedrun, and this will be a Shadow Priest speedrun, but the thing that I think it's important to recognize about a lot of classes is that they don't necessarily have one best spec for everything. For instance, in my recent Monk World Record from 10 to 70, I played Brewmaster for the first 25 levels. And I did it for a specific reason, and gee, I wonder why I'm mentioning that, and why I'm saying I may not only play Shadow for the first 25 levels. If you know, you know. If you don't, you'll find out in five minutes when I start the run. Uh, hopefully it won't be that long. I do kind of want to jump right into it. There's a lot going into this run. Uh, I initially was just going to do a very chill Shadow pre speed run, and I kind of got carried away with the preparation. I, I don't know, I'm just really excited. It's been a while since I've speedrun a cloth class, and the more testing that I did in anticipation of this run, the more excited I got, the cooler like things I found. And I don't think we're going to be getting a world record time here, right? Like, it's I've never played Shadow Priest before. So I've kind of glanced at it, I've studied it a little bit, I've gotten a good solid grasp of the fundamentals, I think, but I'm still going to be playing this completely fresh. And Priest even when played well, is not the fastest class. I have historically said Shadow Priest is the worst leveling spec. Now, I don't think that's actually true anymore. Based on what I've seen just by looking at the talents, a lot of their biggest weaknesses historically have been shored up by the new Dragonflight talents, which is great. Uh, so I am curious to see how they do plan out, or or play out, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be the fastest. I don't think it's going to be anywhere close to the fastest. Um, Monk and Druid definitely still hold that by a landslide, and then there's a few probably still ahead, like Hunter or Paladin. Uh, but I do think it'll be pretty solid. And yeah, it's... Do I... I no, I'm, I'm just going to jump into the run, right? People always complain that I take too long to get these things started, and a lot of this stuff, I want to... I want to catch you by surprise, but there's a few really cool things that we're going to be doing during this run that I think people will like. And yeah, uh, one thing you will quickly note is that I am on live servers for now. More on that later. Um, but yeah, right now, starting the run, I am on live servers. So what we have access to, timer doesn't start until I move or interact with something. But you can see here, I do have the 50% XP buff. This is active on PTR as well, but I do not have the PTR changes for automatic riding training and chromie time scaling up to 61, etc., etc. Uh, the reason I'm doing this primarily is because, as you will see, uh, when timer starts in 3, 2, 1, there we go. So as you will see, one of the main reasons that I don't have or that I am on live servers and I'm not using the PTR like my previous run, is I actually want to do dungeons. Uh, I've talked in the past about how dungeon leveling is... It, it is fast at points. It is fast in very specific cases. And I've shown that before. I'm going to be doing something fairly similar here, except I will not be tanking. And another thing that I have said many, many, many times... Oh, I fucked up the order. Oh, this is going to be a problem. Hold on. I always get that confused, uh, which order you do the bags and stuff. Uh, that's fine, though. All this means is that I need to manually equip the bags. I mean, this is like, what, a, a 10 second time loss. It's very much not the end of the world. Just, just a little bit slow as a result. And then I'm going to grab my draft of 10 lands. I'm going to drink one right off the bat, and then we can get going with all of the other stuff. Uh, the only problem is I did kind of organize my stuff in the complete reverse order and how it's not going to be like that. So probably going to have a little bit of a hard time um, finding stuff. Right. OK. Uh, but it's fine. I still have a decent amount of setup to do. Might as well just equip the tabard just to get that out of the way. Um, 
and then talk to Kuromi, can get this quest done. So here's what I'm going to do. Select a timeline. I'm first going to pick a random one, Legion Invasion. Then we're going to open this up. You can see Random Legion Dungeon. But then I'm going to go ahead, select a different timeline. I'm going to pick Portal to Outland, if it lets me. Uh, maybe I need to walk away, come back, talk to Chromie, select a different timeline, Portal to Outland. Will you work now? There we go. All right. Uh, no particular reason I did that. I just, I have like a sneaking suspicion that there is a bug that makes me have to select a different timeline first. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to select Legion again. Ooh. Um, but if you'll notice here, still has random Burning Crusade dungeon. I remember I tried to get that to work in one of my other speed runs and I said something like, ah, oh, it didn't work correctly. And uh, I got a bunch of comments asking me what the tech was that I was trying to set up. Um, that I didn't manage to get working properly. That was the tech. It was managing to get the Burning Crusade Dungeon Finder to stick around, even though I am not in um, uh, what should we call it? Uh, even though I am not in Burning Crusade time walking. Uh, all right, here we go. Holy. So as I said, we're not playing exclusively Shadow, and we're actually not starting off with Shadow. Uh, dispel harmful magic effects on the target. Put that on there. Honor hold mage. Talk to you. And hey, people who are familiar with my standard route are going to be really fucking confused right about now, <laughs> because we are already going way off the fucking rails from what I normally do. There's a reason. In fact, I'm actually, I'm going to stop for a second uh, while I wait on a queue. What is this? It should pop any second now. Um, I'm going to take this, put that on shift one, put this on shift two. Uh, we're going to... Uh, take you, put you here. Uh, other stuff. Wizard oil, I can use that. Yep. Uh, yeah, and you can see I've gotten caster consumables. I don't normally do this, um, but like I said, I got really carried away doing preparation for this run. I even I went out of my way. I got fucking caster consumes. I got all the fancy shit. We are going all out for this run, or almost all out. Uh, I don't have, like, gear sets, because it's not, like, an actual... I'm not going for, like, a world record. This isn't, like, a super-duper fancy speed run. Um, but I am trying to make it at least somewhat good. All right. Smite. Actually, put Smite there. Ah, uh, do 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 Talent points. Take Holy Nova. I'm losing a little bit of time just by setting this up, but I think it's important just because I have a lot. Uh, normally, I wouldn't do this. Normally, I would just jump right into it. The main reason why I'm spending so much time setting this up is because I need to make sure that all of this is um, ready by the time I get into my dungeon. Because I need to be healing. And uh, I don't think anyone has actually seen me heal on this channel before. Uh, I'm not a healer. I never have really healed. It is not something that I have. Oh my god, that is loud. I don't know why the sound effect for that is so much louder than everything else. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Elixir of Greater Intellect. I don't know why it's down there. Uh, I'll just drag and drop so I can find it more easily. Drag and drop you. Uh, Swiftness Potion I have in my bars. Yep. Okay, I think I'm all set for the low levels. Um, and let me just... Oh yeah, before I forget, put that over there. Uh... Get that quest complete, and then, yeah, dungeon's gonna pop. Okay, so why am I playing holy? I know I've kind of been like busy doing stuff. Well, for starters, uh, DPS queues are fucking abysmal. If you are playing a pure DPS spec, I, I don't even know if I recommend doing dungeons. You're just gonna have such a long queue time. Um, but this is why I recommend playing holy, at low levels. Look at details in the bottom left. Uh, I'm pressing one button. I am pressing holy nova. And that is how much damage it does. Um, I've kind of like, I mean, I've known about this for a while because it's been the case for many, many years. But Holy Priest is, oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. Whoops. I was spamming my healing potion instead of my, uh, my Shadow Word Pain. Holy Priest has, for a while now, been like the most broken spec at level 10 or whatever. At least for what it does, right? Like, there are specs that even with me spamming Holy Nova and just killing everything, there are specs that do more damage than this. 
right? Like Brewmaster does about as much damage. Prop Heli does about as much damage. A lot of specs have abilities that at level 10 will just kill things in two hits. The thing that makes Holy Priest so special is that Holy Nova also heals. So it does that much damage, but it also does insane healing. And it also does so much healing that you basically don't need to press any other healing buttons, at least for a good long while. So what this means is that not only are you getting a healer queue, not only are you doing more damage than a lot of DPS specs in the game, like five times more damage than a lot of DPS specs in the game, but you're literally unkillable. So as you can see here, I am the entire five man. I am the tank, the healer, and the DPS. I do not need anyone here right? I am just holding W, I am mashing one, and things are dying. In fact, I can even start using my speed boosts. I can use my necklace, and I can dot U, dot U. Shadow and Pain doesn't even really do that much. All right, keep kiting. Yep, yep. Uh, if I wanted to, I could even use, um, could even use uh, what you might call it, my swiftness potion here. But I'm going to wait for the group to catch up because what I worry sometimes, the only issue with doing this is if you get too far ahead of your group, sometimes they get like pissy and you'll get people that are like, oh my God, you're not the tank. You can't pull everything. And it's like, I get it. You know, people want to feel important in leveling dungeons. And I've said it before. This is why I always hate when dungeons are viable in any shape or form for speed leveling. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to do the thing that's fastest, right? That's what I'm here for. It's a speed run. If me holding W as a holy priest and tanking the entire dungeon is the fastest way to complete it, that's just what I'm going to do. Uh, but I know that it kind of, or some people would argue it kind of ruins their fun, right? And I get it. I don't, I don't want to have to do that, um, but this is what it is. All right, I got another talent point, uh, Holy Word Serenity. Holy Word Serenity is actually quite nice, because that means if, in a pinch, I need to use a heal spell, I just have that. On what level can I use this? I can use my Elixir of Greater Intellect at level 16. That is my next consumable level. So I'm just going to... Dot up all these targets. I mean, I'm kind of playing Shadow Priest. I'm pressing Shadow Word Pain, right? That's something. And technically speaking, I could do the Levitate skip, but there's a quest over here that I actually want to do. I am going to do Levitate. Or do I have Levitate yet? No, I do not have Levitate yet. I don't think. Uh, yeah. And I'm intentionally not putting any of those other buttons on my bars. I did a bit of testing because like a lot of times when I'm playing a new spec and I'm doing like a fresh speed run on that spec, I like to go in blind and just kind of see how it turns out. And like, you know, viewers get to watch me play it for the first time. And you will get to do that when I'm playing Shadow Priest later in the run because uh, I will swap. I'm only really playing Holy for dungeons and because... Just the scaling at low levels means that Holy Priest is just, you should play this, right? And I know some people might be wondering why I'm not playing Disc, because it's the, you know, considered to be the damage healer. It, I mean, at a higher level, I'm not entirely sure how it pans out, but I can tell you having tested it, Disc isn't bad. Like, it has access to pretty much all the same tools, and it has Penance, but... Whereas it has Penance and a few other slight damage buffs, I have Chastise, and eventually I get Holy Fire at really, really low levels. And yeah, you, that's kind of all you really need. So Holy is definitely the better option if all we care about is damage. Just because single target, you spam Holy Smite and keep up um, Shadow Word Pain, and then AoE, you literally just press Holy Nova and you're good to go. Uh, even for questing, for the record, if you aren't doing dungeons, I would still say probably just start as Holy and then pivot to Shadow, because... You could technically use Holy Nova, I guess, as Shadow. It's something you can spec into, but you have to invest like three points into it. So Shadow can't start doing this until level 13. And what, if you're going to just kind of slowly grind through mobs for three levels? I guess it wouldn't be that slow. But why would you do that when you could just start as Holy, grind through the first 15 levels by just pressing one button, and then swap to Shadow when things start to actually outscale your one ability thing? And I should also note, uh, heirlooms are not, like, really helping here. Um, the, the heirlooms themselves are obviously helping. So if you were to do this on a brand new character, sure. 
But I have like, you know, these fancy heirlooms, I have like elemental force, I have all of these consumables. So you might be thinking that this is not practical outside of using all of these fancy consumables, and I can assure you it is. Because I didn't bother mailing over all my stuff when I was doing my test runs before starting this. I literally just made a Shadow Priest, and then I slapped all of my heirlooms on it from the, uh, what is it, the little collections tab down here. Just press that and equipped unenchanted heirlooms for all of it and that worked i got the exact same mileage out of it i'm probably doing slightly more damage now because if i look down here yeah i got mark the head and Seder. Uh, on that note there, there's a lot of stuff i have to cover in this run because i've done a lot of um a lot of digging into different things before starting this and i found a few things that i want to talk about as we go on um dungeons are a little bit though so it's hard to like comment as much uh real quick i need to teleport out of dungeon and then i'm going to teleport back in so teleport out of dungeon teleport to dungeon and that way i can quickly hand in the quests so yeah over there and do that and leave instance group cool now hopefully if this works the way i think it does Ah, random legion dungeon. Okay, um, it's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah, it's not the it's not the end of the world. Um, in fact, yeah, I'm actually I'm not gonna not gonna do this. If that worked correctly, what I would do is I would kind of do a, a mix like a back and forth of wad intro, uh, while I did the BC dungeons. But I'm not too concerned about trying to do that. Also, I'm potentially going to do in a like a world record attempt specifically on Alliance for 10 to 70 again. I might only do 10 to 60. I'm debating between 10 to 60 or 10 to 70. Um, I would say put it up to a poll, but I'm fairly confident that if I put it up to a poll, everyone would just vote for you know me doing 10 to 70. And at that point, it's like, yeah, it's more about whether I think it's a good idea, whether I think it's worth investing my time in, and I'm not so sure that it would be. Um, yeah, the problem with BC dungeons early on is... I wasn't sure if that would work. I've, uh... I, I've had it sometimes work, sometimes not. Like, I could go do the WAD intro... Or the the legion do the legion intro skip get my dollar on hearthstone i could go do that right now i don't think it would be worth it uh for reasons that i will explain later i'm not going to be getting the dollar on hearthstone in this run just because i don't think it is actually worth my time um and I, i'm not gonna should i i guess there's no real point in me discussing what i might potentially do in the next run but in theory i wouldn't have even gone to the wad intro when i do this run with the darkman fair active because all of my world record attempts obviously are using darkman fair i would instead of doing that i would queue for the bc dungeon i would stay in bc time walking so that there's no potential problems and then i would talk to the dark moon guy i would teleport over to the darkman fair get the buff and then when i exit the darkman fair it would dump me immediately in goldshire uh, over, um, wrong zone, over here, right? Which is kind of where I need to go anyways. And then I would pick up one or two quests in Goldshire, head to Eastvale Locking Camp, do the Eastvale Locking Camp quests, and it would be, like, really efficient. So that is at least the plan. Um, just picking this up. You can't do... Can you do Honor the Flame of... I have no idea. I, I'm not sure what the capital city quests are. I'm also, I should note, I normally don't do midsummer stuff. Uh, I had a few people... Oh shit, I should... One of the other reasons I came here is I wanted to... Why is the buff... Can the buff work? It is not letting me click on the poll. There we go. Now it's stacking up. Okay, I only got three minutes. Um, unfortunate, but at least I will get partial experience. I don't know why that was bugging out and not actually giving me the buff. I also did get Sanguine Hibiscus ahead of time, so I can just instant complete, uh, bring me a shrubbery. 
that just means that I won't need to stop and loot the Sanguine Hibiscus, and it is a tradable item, so I don't know, just makes it easier. Uh, but yeah, so since this is not a world record attempt, since this is just a fun Shadow Priest run, a few people in my Discord did express interest in seeing just, like, how the Midsummer buff would impact the route. They were like, yeah, I get that you don't want to use it for, like, world records, but it would at least be nice to know for our casual runs how we should integrate it um, into our own personal play. And I'm like, yeah, that's actually a fair point, because I can see how, even though I don't personally want to use holiday buffs, a lot of people are curious about how you would optimally use it. I don't necessarily know if if this was a world record and I was using the holiday buffs and I was trying to be like super efficient. I don't think I would have gone for it there. Purely because during that time I would be doing Darkman Fair. But since I have literally nothing else to do while I wait for cues, that is what I decided to spend my time doing. Uh real quick, I need to grab Rhapsody and shit. Uh a few talents I need to grab, actually. I should have done that earlier while I was waiting, but I forgot. Whoopsie daisy. Uh, but yeah, so you would just grab the pull buff, you would stack it up as much as possible. Um, I probably, like I said, if this was a world record run, I wouldn't have gotten it there. I would have head headed to Goldshire, I would have picked it up within Goldshire when I was grabbing those quests, and I would have just grabbed the pull, and then it, I wouldn't recommend doing any of the actual midsummer quests, like the torch tossing or whatever, stuff like that. Don't bother, it's not really worth your time. What is worth your time is Honor the Flames. Because Honor the Flames is really straightforward. You press one button, and you get a quest worth of experience. So if you ever happen to be in a town and you see uh like one of the midsummer bonfires, or if for whatever reason, I don't really think there's any situation where you would encounter a horde flame? I'm trying to think. No, because, like, pretty much all of the efficient leveling zones are, well, the ones in my route, which are also the official efficient leveling zones, none of them are really in shared zones. At no point are you ever really crisscrossing with horde players. Now, let me equip that real quick. And also equip this. Right. Uh, what else do I need to equip anything that I got? No, I think that is all. Uh, the only slots I'll need to equip items in are gloves, belt, bracers, and boots. And I think I... Pro Did I mention that in my last world record? I don't think it mattered. Because I think... I, I might have brought it up offhandedly, but basically, the... Some of the boss drops, like you see there, I actually got gloves from that boss, which are decent, uh, right? But the main thing that we're hunting for from these dungeons, in addition to just the experience, right? I'm doing it because it's good XP. You know, it's really that simple. But dungeons early on are good for two reasons. One, they end up being really fast because of the scaling. You know, when Holy Nova is just insta-killing everything, suddenly dungeons become really good because they're tuned to be much more difficult and the XP is tuned around it taking like three times as long as it's actually taking. Uh, BC dungeons in particular are really fast and tend to have a lot of quests in them, so that makes it even more efficient. And I would say Wrath dungeons and Kata dungeons are comparable in the efficiency. Kata dungeons obviously had some weird scaling issues semi-recently, so there's that. That is getting fixed to my knowledge. But prior to those scaling issues, they were efficient. I would say Wrath dungeons are about as fast as these. But because TBC is definitely the fastest it kind of creates like a snowball effect, right? Where everyone knows that TBC is really fast. So anyone trying to level efficiently through dungeons just spams TBC. And I should note, of course, if you are only trying to do dungeons and for whatever reason you don't want to follow my questing route whatsoever, which, you know, I'd recommend doing because it's there for a reason. It is fast. Uh, but if you really just want to only do dungeons, then you actually shouldn't just spam TBC. You should spam TBC early on, and then once you kind of run out of the good dungeons, and you start hitting, like, the Architraz and stuff, and you've already done all the dungeon quests, move on, move on to Wrath of the Lich King, do all of those dungeons, because not only are they going to be better than some of the later TBC dungeons, but they're also going to be uh, good because you're getting the, uh, whatchamacallit, you're getting, let me do chastise here, uh, dungeon quests out of it. So 
it ends up being more time efficient. I want to make sure I don't get knocked off here when Gazon does his knockback. Look at that! Look at that damage! <laughs> God, I love Holy Priest leveling. I think I've mentioned offhandedly before that I have done a bit of priest leveling before, but I've actually almost exclusively leveled as Holier Disc Priest. And I would say the exact one that is faster has kind of varied over the years. There have been times where, you know, Holy Nova, if you get access to it early, you just insta-kill everything. And, well, right now, you instantly get Holy Nova at level 10. And I remember there were periods of time where Holy was, like, slightly weaker at low levels. But generally speaking, during those times, Penance would also just kind of insta-kill everything. So there have been times where Holy Nova is the really OP ability. There have been times where Penance is the really OP ability. I've played both Disc and Holy Priest. But a lot of the times when I leveled Priests, it was actually before I ever started making YouTube videos. Because prior to Shadowlands, and I would say even, like, we're talking a while ago, actually. More like Miss of Pandaria and... Um, whatchamacallit, and Wad. Because if you want to talk, like, when dungeon spamming was the best, it was Mop and Wad. Wad obviously gets a little bit funky, like, technically, dungeon spamming wasn't the best if you had, like, the 300% XP pot. You would still want to do some dungeons, but Wad leveling was just a whole nother level of fuckery. Like, people say that retail leveling is fast now. Sure, with my route, with, like, speedrun shit, retail leveling is fast. But keep in mind that back in Warlords of Draenor, you could go through... The entire leveling process, which is arguably longer in terms of how many things you needed to do back then than it is now, and yet the whole thing took like two hours or less if you had the experience potions, you did need somebody to carry you, so it's one of those things where it's like, eh, does it really count as leveling, right? But it was so much easier than it is now, because nowadays... The way that people get carried, right? It's there's the whole Brackenhide Hollow boosting thing. And Brackenhide Hollow boosting is fast, but you need like two level 70, geared level 70 people just farming elites nonstop for hours. And stuff like uh, basically level boosting back in WAD was so brain dead easy. Because it wasn't about, like, the effort that the players who are boosting you are putting in. They're just one-shotting low-level mobs. You just have... I, I forget what the thing was called. It was like Elixir of the Rapid Mind, and it gave you 300% additional experience. So you would just get boosted, but it was 300% faster. So if you had, like, one or two friends who could set aside two hours to, like, watch Netflix while they boosted your alt, and then you just traded like that, it, it was so easy. I leveled a lot of alts doing that back in WAD. Like, I would boost my friend's characters, then my friends would boost my characters. Uh, but I also did do some solo leveling. Oh, I I got yeeted. Uh, this is a problem, because I actually need to loot the boss. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I did a, a decent amount. I would say before I really discovered how efficient... Uh, level boosting was with the experience potion and the other thing was the reason why i don't really support level boosting right now is because you kind of do need to pay somebody for it like you're unless you have really really good friends you're not going to convince your friends to sit in brackenhide hollow for like three plus hours um boosting you and if you do like i said congratulations you have really good friends um but the because it was so easy to get the 300% XP pots back in the day, I can still, yeah, I can queue again. It was, like, just trivially easy to get those potions. Uh, especially, there was, like, a Winter Veil event where you would just get a ton of them, and I would be sitting on, like, a stack of 10 at a time. So, it was just so, so easy. At that point, every single person I knew was doing leveling boosting, just because it was trivially easy to pull off. I can't do that right- oh, I can't equip gear while I am doing the fire pole dance? Huh. Alright. Uh, I can also use that. Oh, okay, that cancels my fire pole dance. Uh, Brilliant wizard oil. Yeah, all my other stuff is still 
working. Just gonna get this going. I'll stack it up to an hour. Uh, it's, I think, lost on death, but that doesn't really matter. And then while I wait, I might as well pick my talent points. We're gonna take Angelic Feather. Uh, Void Tendrils, I guess? Does it really matter? I don't really think it matters. Uh, Searing Light is Cracked AF. Uh, so Angelic Feather, put that on Shift E. Just take that off my bars. This will go on H. Uh, open my spellbook. Where is... Well, I don't get Holy Fire until level 19. Okay. Uh, did I not take Shadow or Death? Oh, I should take Shadow or Death. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Shadow or Death. Uh, yeah, we'll take Death and Madness. I shouldn't take that over... I shouldn't take Angelic Feather over that. I just misremembered. Um, not a big deal, though. And then I take this... this this yeah that looks good uh that's how i'll set up my bars for now and now i will start heading to goldshire i guess might as well um kind of hoping to at least get like basic writing training learned before i go so if i get one more dungeon and then i can learn writing and then i can start heading to goldshire and i will get out my uh, Eastern Kingdoms. No. Oh, did not mean to press that. That over there. Uh, I don't know how much time I'm actually going to be spending inside. I actually wonder, did I fuck myself by starting the Dark Portal? I don't know if I fucked myself by starting the Watt intro. I don't think I did. I hope I didn't. Uh, okay, I can do this. And any second now, the dungeon should pop, and then I can learn my riding training, and then I can, uh, I can head out and start. Come on, come on, I am burning time. Uh, while I wait, I can also, oh, there we go. All right, perfect timing. Grand Expedition, yak. I'm just gonna clear my bags a little bit before I accept it. Yeah, we're good. Oh, come on, tank. Don't leave me high and dry, tank. Oh, please. Please, please, please. There we go. Ooh, Occam Doom. All right. Uh, Mana Tombs. Oh, this is a good one. Mana Tombs is one of the best. This one is so fast. And you get still a bunch of quests. All right. We are going. Um, yeah, this I have my uh, my bar set up how I want. I I keep losing track of what I was saying. Um, oh yeah, what I was saying before about uh, disc priest and stuff. Yeah, so I played a lot of disc, a lot of holy back when I did uh, leveling in mop and wad, just because when I was messing around with low level healers. I think, honestly, it's pretty safe to say that almost universally throughout the years, Priest has been the best low-level dungeon healer. I don't know how it is in Wrath and Vanilla, but definitely since Mop. Uh, actually, Miss Weaver, Miss Weaver in original Mop, like when it first came out, Miss Weavers were just kind of broken. I played a lot of Miss Weaver when it first came out, too. Uh... It's kind of funny, I've played a lot of low-level healers, but I've never really played them at a high level. Oh, see, this Survival Hunter's popping off, too, and he's mashing two buttons. Ooh, very impressive. Uh, but that's actually going to make things much easier if I have guys that actually know what they're doing. Should speed this up a lot. But yeah, I don't think I've ever really showcased me... Oh, where's this guy going? Where's this guy going? Oh, wrong way, buddy. This is the only downside of not playing a tank. It's that you can't control the um, the direction of the dungeon. So you'll have guardian druids who have no idea where they're going. And if you're playing anything other than a holy priest, or I guess a, a disc priest, that can be really problematic because then you won't be able to just walk into new poles and solo it and not die. Uh, dot all these guys up. I'm also going to pull you. 
And the more mobs, the more damage my Holy Nova does, and the faster this goes. I'm probably going to use my Dark Iron Dwarf Racial for the Intellect on the next pack of Crash. Just dot all this up. Power Word Shields. And let's bounce around. I want to get these guys in the back. This might as well get as much mob kill experience, especially now that I have the Midsummer buff, right? So we're just we're milking it for all it's got. Every last drop of experience from this dungeon. Oh my god, I'm almost oom. Uh uh. How do I get mana back? Wait, I've never actually had to worry about mana so far. Oh my god, I almost killed myself with Shadow or Death. Holy hell. That does a lot of damage to you. I, there's a talent I think I pick up later on that reduces like the kickback damage from Shadow or Death, but I really think I can take that at the moment. Uh, Does my... Yeah, this restores 10% my, of my health and mana, so I can use my food that I normally just use for food buffs, but I can actually use it for uh, restoring mana, which is something I've never had to do during a speedrun. I've never had to stop and drink. Oh no. Feels like I'm playing classic. But it's kind of weird, like, I'm, I'm just floating at like 10% mana, and it's regening just enough to keep me afloat. I'm gonna shield myself. This is this is so dumb. <laughs> this is actually stupid. Wait, oh, I leveled up, so I fully got my mana back. Uh, I also got Holy Fire now, so that does uh, a lot of single target damage. Let me spend a point on sure. Oh, I'm gonna use a speed buff here. Try to catch up. See the bears taking damage, and then I just use what is that? Holy word serenity? Yeah. And they just full heals him. Oh, it's so nice. Jesus, I almost killed myself with that Shadow or Death again. Uh, is that an upgrade? Yeah, that is an upgrade. Oh, fuck yeah. And, okay. Uh, so far, pretty good luck on the drops. There's a guaranteed quest reward bracers, but the itemization is pretty piss poor because it only has one secondary stat. So I'd still like to replace that at some point, but I got really good boots and really good gloves. So that is a big upgrade. Getting gear from this point is really nice because once I hit WAD, like at the higher levels, I will somewhat reliably get gear for slots. Uh, fuck yeah. Ooh, and if they're low level... Actually, I think I'm the lowest level here. So... um, Yeah, with a tank, this is going to be instant cues. So I won't complain. Oh, please. Actually, either one is good. Yeah, Ramparts or Blood Furnace. Both of them kick ass. Okay. Yeah, I... It's kind of like... I don't know. Whenever dungeons are meta, it always gets a bit sketchy, because then it's like, okay, if I'm re-queuing with a group of people, this is still... I'm playing solo, right? Because I'm not actually grouping up with them. It's the same as if I had found them in a random dungeon queue. It's just now we're running together again. So then it's like, am I not allowed? If the, the random people decide they want to requeue, am I not allowed to requeue with them? Uh, ooh, he's taking damage. Uh, he, uh, okay, he must really trust me after that last dungeon, because he's just fucking sending it. <laughs> oh my god, buddy, I'm not an actual healer. You shouldn't trust me. You should not trust me like this. Oh no. Okay, he's got it. He's got it. He's a guardian druid. Who am I kidding? I mean, he's literally the best tank for low-level dungeons. Uh, if he can't survive that, you know, he doesn't deserve my healing anyway. 
Uh, nothing to even be worried about. Oh, that guy got it through the wall. Well played, sir. Fuck, I accidentally shielded myself. I'm a mess. Oh, no. Yeah, he, he pulled too much. Sorry, buddy. I should have. I greeted the quest reward and then suddenly he died. Um, ah, oh, fuck. If I hadn't misclicked that, uh, that power word shields, then he would have lived. That's, that's on me. Yeah, see, the thing about low-level dungeons is most of the time your tank is way too scared to do any actual, like, difficult pulls. Oh my god. Yeah, that is such a nutty cooldown. Imperial Blaze. Just three instant cast Holy Fires. Oh my god. Yeah, when I did my testing on, um, like, before starting this run, I only got up to, like, level 19. I was just doing some, some casual runs while watching the Americans on Hulu, which really good show. I'm glad my dad recommended it to me. And, uh, I wasn't, like, really paying attention or really trying to min-max, but this is... We are zooming now. Uh, okay, let me grab that. I'll grab GS. Oh, he's doing a big pull again. Actually, this is a this is a pretty normal pull. Uh, I already have Guardian Spirit on my bars. I'll put GS there. Just gonna throw it on him. I think we're good. Even at, what is this, level level 21? I was probably going to stop around level 20 or so. But at this point, it's like, man, I am just zooming. Holy Nova is still just kind of blasting. Uh, especially now that Imperial Blaze kicks in, I can just do this. And it's just kind of broken. I do that with one of these. One of these. Alright, yeah. Yeah, uh, that much damage. Look, holy fire. <laughs> oh, that is so dumb. Uh, that should not do that much damage. Holy shit. Uh, let me just click off my food buff and get it back real quick. Yeah. I would feel really bad if this was Darkman Fair, because then he would have lost his Darkman Fair buff when I let him die. I would have been, like, extra careful to keep him alive, but thankfully it's not. I'm trying to justify it. I shouldn't have let him die. You know, it's just me being a fucking idiot. Okay. That's Root in the Heralds. <laughs> yeah yeah that's um yeah uh this is abnormally fast um i'll just say turning in quests and i'll read you see what do i get what do i get shoulders okay i do not need that uh what do i need angelic feather yep perfect oh shit i jumped down i'll probably get an entire level from this yeah i got an entire level from that holy shit um okay what do i want to take I don't even know what I take. I mean, none of this works in dungeons anyway. Uh, I didn't look into H Priest talents because I didn't expect to be playing it for this long. Um, I swear I'm going to play Shadow Priest eventually. I know some people, oh no, escape from dirt holds. Oh no. Um, okay. Uh, because this group is really good, I will stick it out through escape from dirt holds. Normally, I say if you get escape from Dernhold, you just leave. 
but yeah, see, even the hunter knows. Oh, you, I don't, you can't see chat because I have it covered at the time. The hunter just said, "Ugh," and the druid said, "Slow paced." Yeah, yeah. This is normally I would say stop doing it the moment you get escape from Durnholds. Um, it's uh, it's not great. Druid can run there faster than the dragon. Everyone else should take the dragon. Uh, do I stick it out? I stick it out. So, the main reason I'm sticking it out is because if I look through specific dungeons, right? Oh, we have... Why is Wrath of the Lich King? Was that the tank? Oh, no, that was somebody else. Okay. <laughs> Don't blame them. I may or may not have advocated for uh, for not doing Escape from Dirthold in my leveling guide, so you know I have nobody but myself to blame if people leave. But I've done I've done Slave Pens, I've done Underbog, I just did Ramparts, uh, did Mana Tombs. So yeah, there's still a lot of good dungeons I can get. The Mechanar is absurdly fast. It Mechanar is like stupid good. Um. Botanica isn't terrible. What else? Sethek Halls is really good. Aconite Crypts is insane. Blood Furnace is insane. Yeah, so I, I have Blood Furnace, Aconite Crypts, Sethek Halls, and Mechanar as really good hits. And I also wouldn't leave a Botanica run just because it's not the worst. Although it is, like, kind of A. Um... So I have a decent amount of good hits after Escape from Durnholds, and yeah, if it gets Architraz, which is, it is, no, Architraz isn't even a possibility yet. Okay. Um, who are we requeuing with? Oh, unfortunately, I think I'm probably going to hit level 25 within this run, and then I think we'll unlock Architraz. So, unfortunately... I do think that Architraz will come into play by the end of it. Need to be really careful here. I'm actually just going to GS myself. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, we're good, we're good. Yeah, it's also, my Holy Nova damage is starting to fall off slightly. Not a ton, but enough that it's noticeable. Like, now you can actually see the bars of the other players, and they're not completely dwarfed by just Holy Nova, Holy Nova, Holy Nova. So I need to start paying a little bit closer attention. Definitely, and I should also note, by level 30, you definitely want to stop. So what I'm hoping is that after completing this Escape from Durnhold, I get one or two more good dungeons, and then at level 30, I nope out. And the best thing about going straight in uh, up to level 30 is that lets me skip pretty much the entirety of Red Ridge and Duskwood. I just don't even need to do those zones. And then I can just go straight into Lockmodon and Warlords of Draenor, which is just like, that is just the efficiency dream for Alliance. You just completely skip those notes. Because the reality is, you know, I've said before that for Horde, you do all of Silverpine, you do all of Hillsbrad. Silverpine and Hillsbrad are both faster than everything except the Watt intro. You definitely want to do the Watt intro at some part, point. That's what I did in my um, latest run. Uh, and obviously, with the 50% buff, it kind of skews things a little bit, you know? But Alliance, you know, everything in WAD is better than uh, the initial Alliance zones. You don't actually really want to do them. The only reason they're there is because WAD is... Oh, did somebody... Alexa, stop. I think... Ping me. Um, okay, we, we got all of them, all right? Uh, what was I saying? Words before my Alexa disrupted me. Oh, it, okay, good. It didn't activate. I was worried I accidentally activated by saying that. All right, let's just do holy fire, holy fire, holy fire. 
Mm. Ooh. That is, yeah, still top DPS. So at least I get to hold that for a little bit longer. Uh, one of the other issues with Escape from Durnhold is I did not learn riding training. And this is... I guess riding training doesn't really matter, because a lot of the time you have to follow Thrall, and he goes, like, really slow regardless, but still would have been nice to have. It also would have meant that I could go slightly faster by running instead of following the Drake in that initial section, but, you know. Into the basement, into the basement, into the basement. All right, uh, let's see. I think we've killed all the guys. Yeah, there's some trash ahead. So let me let me set up my other stuff that I'll need at level 30 just in advance. Uh, Bear Tartar. I'll need the War Scroll of Intellect. Ghost Elixir. Is that it? Uh, Volcanic Potion I will need. So I'll just put that there for when I will eventually start using it. And Hyper Augment Rune, or Focus Augment Rune, is not until level 40? Okay. Yeah, this is... Actually, Bear Tartar isn't until level 40 as well, so this is all I need. Uh, uh, this is... This is surprisingly fast. But yeah, what was I saying before? Oh yeah, Red Ridge, Duskwood. They're not bad, but the reason that you do them at low levels is because Gorgrond is really fast when you have fast flying, and it's really, really, really slow when you don't. So that is kind of true for all of Wad. It ends up being really bad if you can't just fly. So Duskwood is nice because it's not, like, too punishing if you don't have, um, like, fast movement. But actually, Duskwood... Duskwood, you kind of need to be level 24 because it ends up being really slow if you don't have at least fast ground riding. Fast ground riding makes a lot of it much easier. So that's one of the main reasons why I generally recommend, especially for Alliance, do dungeons from 1 to 20. Because as Horde, yeah, doing dungeons 1 to 20, it's probably going to be a slight time boost. And I'll probably do it whenever I do another like really fast Horde run, even though I've already said my next fast run is going to be Alliance. But the thing about Horde is... What do I want to do? Let me do Dominate Minds. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to take Void Tendrils. Uh, the reason I want to take Void Tendrils is because that gives me access to PI. This. And at least put Shadow Word Pain on him, then fill the ads, and then I won't Holy Smite. I almost killed myself. Uh, that would have been really bad. I, I don't know how that second Shadow or Death didn't kill him. Like, am I crazy or should that have done enough damage? Oh, wait, these guys are going to attack him. We need to fight them. Yeah, so Thrall will get in combat with any Lord or on Watchmen, even though they are neutral. So, like, everybody's running ahead, but what they don't realize is that they these guys will auto aggro onto Thrall which will make him stay behind, so you need to clear the path. There are times when the patrol doesn't intersect with Thrall's route at all, and you can just let him run, but I always like to scout ahead during this section and find any of those patrols just so that it doesn't delay Thrall, and you can kill them ahead of time. That was just a unlucky timing, so it interrupted Thrall ever so slightly. Technically, we could have killed it in time if everybody was here. Um... Yeah, but I would say out of all of the zones that are used in my leveling route, Red Ridge is by far the worst. And as a, a close second is um, Shadow Moon Valley, or at least the sections of Shadow Moon Valley that I recommend doing. Because, like, the thing about those sections of Shadow Moon Valley is they're not, like, super efficient. But what that lets you do is, assuming you haven't done dungeons it lets you skip some of the less efficient sections of Duskwood. So it's like, from for like levels 10 to 30 for Alliance, it's kind of complicated because 
in a perfect world, you would get like insanely good dungeon luck and go 10 to 30, kind of like I'm doing with the exception of Old Hills Brad, entirely through dungeons. With kind of average or even below average luck, like you saw in my 10 to 70 world record, I actually got really shit RNG in that. Uh, then you would do dungeons from like 10 to 20-ish. I think I went up to 25 on there just because I got lucky at the end hitting the Mechnar as my last dungeon. Uh, but 10 to 20, 10 to 25, and then you would do, like, the most efficient bits of Duskwood to get up to 30. And in, like, the absolute worst-case scenario, you get completely turbo-fucked by RNG, then you should at the very least be able to get to 20 pretty safely. I mean, you saw me get to 20 easily uh, earlier in this run. And then you just do Duskwood, and you do most of Duskwood. And then if you need to, absolutely need to, like, if you... um basically like hit 19 or barely managed to get to 20 and you get to like the really slow parts of Duskwood, that's when it can be worth it to go start WAD and do the WAD intro and then do, um, uh, you know, the stuff in Shadowmoon Valley. Uh, but generally speaking, one of the nice things about Dungeons for Alliance is it lets you cut out a lot of the slow parts of the route. Horde is, it's whatever. It, it's like, you're going to be doing the same thing. Um, you're going to be doing dungeons, then silver pine, then Hillsbrad, then Wad intro. And then as you saw in my run, I technically could have just not even done Gorgrond if I wanted to. I just decided to go into Gorgrond because, you yeah, know, why not? But that's the least efficient part of the route, just because silver pine's so good. And also silver pine is a bit of a weird one because it's a really efficient zone, but you also can't really cut anything out of it because so much of it is backloaded. So, if I could, like, if I could make, like, the perfect horde route, uh, basically not actually possible, but if I could, like, change the way quest progression worked, I would basically cut out the entire first half of Silver Pine Forest, and then I would do the second half of Silver Pine Forest with parts of Gorgrond. But, you know, unfortunately, that is, that is not possible. You need to do the prereqs to get to the good shit. Uh, let me drink another potion here. I think, yeah, I don't need to refresh anything else. I just refresh my food buff. Um, I can refresh my wizard oil. Might as well. Target is too high level. Oh, I've already out-leveled brilliant wizard oil. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have refreshed that. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's like a very, 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 very small stat boost. Yeah, wizard oil is weird. I technically, I used to use sharpening stones, and uh, I think in my original druid speedruns, I actually used weight stones. I still have, like, a lot of adamantite weight stones in my bags on my druid, but there's, like, a weird thing that Blizzard did with Dragonflight with the item level scaling, and now a lot of the arbitrary item level restrictions that Blizzard put on items, because, like, for, for context... When Chromie Time initially came out, a lot of items would start hitting their cap around the time when you would hit quote-unquote max level. So max level during the Shadowlands pre-patch, which is when Chromie Time was introduced and when the major like item or level squish and item level squish happened, uh, basically everything got squished down from item levels 1 to 50-ish. And then... Stuff in BFA went up to, like, a hundred-something. Like, I want to say my Mythic Nihilotha items were, like, item level 130. So, like, entry-level gear in uh, at the end of BFA after the squish was, like, item level 50. And um, max-level stuff was closer to, like, item level 100, right? And then, obviously, you get into Shadowlands and stuff like that and uh, yada, yada, yada. But then what happened in Dragonflight is they re-squished all of the item levels. They kind of did like another mini squish, kind of like what they did in Shadowlands. The problem is, when they did the big squish in Shadowlands, credit to Blizzard at the time, at least, they actually did a lot of due diligence in making sure a lot of stuff worked as intended, and they went back through all of the old enchantments, all of that stuff, and made sure, okay, can players actually use this? And what ended up happening 
is they made it so a lot of those items had a um, maximum use item level of 50. So you'll see, like, uh, if I hover over Brilliant Wizard Oil, cannot be applied to items higher level than 50. Uh, quest credit real quick. Uh, so th the reason for this is, like I said, the max that heirlooms would cap out at was 50. So all of your enchantments, all your stuff would work because, you know, it, it was totally fine, right? You would uh, hit end, the end of chromie time, and then you would be able to still apply all of your enchantments to your gear. And that just meant that you couldn't use this while leveling in Shadowlands. The cannot be applied to items higher than level 50 was specifically a restriction to prevent this from being used on Shadowlands gear. The problem is, when they rebalance the item levels, you can see now I'm like level 25, and my staff has already outscaled Brilliant Wizard Oil. Which, mind you, this same exact staff would have been able to support Brilliant Wizard Oil all the way up to level 50, even before uh, this, uh, whatchamacallit, even before Dragonflight. And now, that's not even the cap. Now the cap is actually even higher. It goes all the way up to 60. So in theory, they should have rebalanced it the other way and made it so you can apply it to items lower than item level, I don't know what it is, like 170 or something like that? Yes, Auconite Crips. Banger. Uh, this is probably the slower end of the ones that I could have gotten. There's only two bosses and there's a decent amount of trash, but it, it's not too bad. This is still a pretty solid dungeon. Uh, and then just fingers crossed that I get one last good dungeon before I bail on dungeon leveling. Um, but yeah, so, now, this, this would only be a minor inconvenience if the only thing that it affected was the stuff that I'm talking about here. Of, like, you know, oh, you, uh, whatever, you, you get, like, you can't use your stuff past level 25. Like, that's annoying, right? The main issue with this, and something that absolutely needs to get changed, so I know, I, I, at least I'm pretty sure... At least one Blizzard dev watches some of my videos. I don't know if they watch the leveling videos or just the ones on, like, you know, endgame retail stuff, but um, I've definitely gotten a few things nerfed. So I'm going to keep talking about this because it's something that I've gotten a lot of comments asking me about or people messaging me. The main issue that that change affects is now, with a new item level scaling, it is literally impossible to apply... Uh, Miss a Pandaria enchants to shoulders, and it is impossible to apply, like, basically any good leg armor enchants. So you can see here on my pants, I have plus two intellect and plus two versatility. That is not possible to get right now. So I used this on my pants years ago. I've had enchanted heirlooms for a very long time, right? I probably enchanted this back in WAD whenever I was, like I said, uh, doing, like, dungeon stuff uh, as a disc priest. So I've had this, and I can still use it. Same with my shoulders. Plus three intellects, plus one crit. Uh, this is the Missa Pandaria enchant. This is like, I think it's like the Cataclysm leg armor. I forget what the best one is. I'm pretty sure Cataclysm is the latest expansion to feature good leg armor. Technically, we do have leg armor usable from Dragonflight, but it requires level 61 for the effect to actually happen. So, I mean, if you really want to, which is what I do for speedruns, you can have two sets of heirlooms. You can have, like, this regular set with all the normal enchants, and then you can have a separate set with full Dragonflight enchants for the final 10 levels. Um, that's not even a bad idea. Like, you know, it's not too expensive. It is what I do for, like, optimizing world records and such. But I would say for the average player, they just want to have enchants that they can apply. At level 1, it works all the way through. And as of right now, that is not something you can do for shoulders and pants. And it's especially egregious because it still works for everybody else, right? Like, I can still get the benefit of my heirloom enchants, but other people can't, arbitrarily. And I've seen, like, a few people speculating that, oh, well, it's Blizzard's intention to nerf it. And no. Um, for a variety of reasons, no. One, why is Blizzard randomly going out there and nerfing existing enchants? right? Like, that's not something that Blizzard would do just for heirloom enchants. That, no. Um, but the main reason why that's obviously not what Blizzard is doing is because, uh, oh, I have a cast speed reduction thing on me. Good thing I have triple insta-cast, um, holy fire. And then I'm gonna nearly kill myself with the blowback there. Actually, that wasn't too bad. 
I can put one point on Afterlife. I guess I'll take Cosmic Ripple because that looks like it's passive healing. And any passive healing is good because it means I can spend more time doing damage. So I'll take that. Um, but yeah, the main reason why I would say is Blizzard obviously isn't going out of their way to just randomly nerf, like, leveling heirloom enchants for no reason. They generally don't give a shit. I, I mean, they have left a lot of leveling exploits blatantly untouched for quite a while. It took them, like, months to nerf Cobalt Assembly and stuff, and they only stepped in because people started seriously abusing it. Uh, but, like, leveling heirloom enchants, which has been a thing since Wrath of the Lich King when heirlooms first came out, no, they don't give a shit. The only thing they do is on new heirlooms, they or new enchants, they tend to put restrictions in place that prevent it from being used on older ones. And then as we've seen over the years, a lot of times they loosen those restrictions so that you can end up using them. Which is what they should have done when Dragonflight came out, but Dragonflight was rushed. And, I, I mean, I complained a lot when Dragonflight came out about it being rushed, and, you know... Unless you are a hardcore Blizzard simp, you cannot deny that it was a Rust expansion. That doesn't mean that it was bad. I've actually said a few times now that I actually think Dragonflight is better than I expected it to be, and I'm I'm pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. It's not my favorite expansion ever. Some people are saying it's like the second coming of Legion. Nah, I liked Legion more. Personal preference, right? Some people say they really, really, really like it. If the, you are having that much fun in Dragonflight that it is like on the level of Legion for you, awesome. More power to you. Personally, I think it's a good expansion. I think it is miles, miles better than BFA and Shadowlands, which is honestly all I can really ask for. Um, but it's it has, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, there's room for improvement. And I think one of those is, it was fairly rushed, and especially as somebody who is like doing a lot of testing and, you know, doing mythic raiding and stuff like that, where stuff being extremely broken really, really impacts me. Whereas, like, as a casual player, you won't really notice or feel the impact of some game mechanic being absurdly broken. Um, but a lot of tuning, a lot of stuff was just not done properly at the start of the expansion. And that was just a frustrating experience for me. It, not a deal breaker, right? Still playing it is what it is. Uh, this is one where you have to teleport out and teleport back in. Because I'm not running all the way back from here. Uh, in fact, actually, while I'm here, just before anything, just in case I need it in the next dungeon, I am going to train my riding. And then I'm going to teleport to dungeon. And... Then we need to go midway through the dungeon to turn in the next quest. Also, come to think of it, I probably would have bailed earlier if it wasn't for the tank use. Because I guess if you're playing as a tank, like whenever I was playing as a tank in my uh, world record run, you know, I was just chain queuing, so I just kept going until I hit a wall. But as a healer, I was planning on stopping earlier because I figured eventually I would hit like a really long queue time. And at that point, it would just be more effective to swap gears and do something different. Uh, but since this tank is... Oh no, he left. Oh, tragedy. Okay, well, I spoke too soon. <laughs> uh, I will at least try to get one more in. Let's divine. Let's see, I'm permending. Uh, I can do. I, I think I should just take power infusion and then do I want here? It doesn't matter, I'm barely going to be playing it, actually. I don't know why I'm spending so much time trying to min-max this. Uh, power Infusion, I'll just throw on there. And then I can leave Instant School. Okay, so... I think now I want to start the Watt intro. And I will... Yeah, I'm only going to leave it, because what I can do now is I can go start that. And it's... um. Do I even need to switch timelines? I don't really think I need to switch timelines at all. And specific dungeons. Yeah, Architraz is now in the pool. Opening of the Dark Portal is terrible. Magister's Terrace is also just a massive ball ache. Uh, I'm going to 
hop on my Traveler's Tundra Mammoth so I can clear backspace while I go. Uh, yeah, I don't care. Hopefully I get one more good dungeon. Worst case scenario, I don't. And then we switch gears and play Shadow. And then I can actually set everything up on Shadow. Um, before I go, I should actually, I'm close by. I'm going to go rebuff with the Midsummer thing, because, you know, why not? Uh, what else can I do? I don't think I can switch any consumables just yet. Uh, yeah, I've already got all this stuff set up. I don't even need Shimmer Scale or Swim Speed because now I'm skipping Red Ridge entirely and that's the only place you need it for. Oh. Um, I don't need any of that. What's the estimated queue time? That doesn't even show one. Uh, that's not an awesome sign. And cancel my food buff and just grab it again in a second. I'm just going to let this stack up because ideally I don't want to have to come back here. I do want to see how much of an impact the 10% makes. It's probably going to make more of a difference when I get to lock mode on because uh, someone in my Discord said they tested it and this does apply to rare mob experience. So getting 10% additional XP from all of the rares in lock mode on is going to be really, 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 really nice. So we'll see how that pans out. Yeah. The one thing I'm worried about with WAD, though, is the WAD intro requires you to... Can I still... Ah, fuck. Okay, yeah, at a certain level... See, this is why... A lot of people always ask why I never knew that this was a thing, why you could talk to the the honor hold mage and do that. And I always thought it was like momentarily bugged. And there was like a weird breakpoint where at a certain level, it stops taking you to Khadgar and it takes you instead straight to Outland. I don't know what level that is. It's, I think, 25. I don't know why there's that breakpoint. Um, oh, it's the underbug. All right. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'm not doing the same dungeon over and over again. Uh, yeah, that's actually kind of unfortunate, but I would say the later on you go, the more of a chance you have of not hitting the dungeon you want. A Vanguard Battle Mage. Oh, fuck me. Yeah, I can't actually get into the WAD intro. I would have to talk to Chromie. I think. Ooh. Would I, I? I might actually have to talk to Crummy. I think I actually screwed myself by starting it early. Because now the intro quest is... I don't think I can pick up the intro quest from the mission board. I'm pretty sure I can't. I'll try. It would... It should be one of the first options. Maybe if I talk to Crummy again, she'll... But I think what'll actually happen is if I talk to Crummy, she'll say... Uh, she'll send me to Ashran. Because I've already done the starter quest for the Dark Portal. I don't know how I get back there then. I actually, I've never had this thing before. I didn't even consider that when I did that before. We are we are doing science on the fly in the middle of the, the speed run. Uh, so. Um, can I Google this? I'm curious. How to return to Warlords of Draenor intro scenario to pick up where you left off in the world of Draenor intro quest line travel back to the blasted lands once in the zone travel to the dark portal dismount and run through the dark portal to enter the tanan jungle scenario but doesn't that take you to i don't i think that actually takes you to um I don't know if this is correct. Maybe if I specifically select Draenor Chromie time? 
Okay, well now I'm back on the quest line. So now in theory that I have it, if I go back to the Dark Portal, uh, where does this take me? Black Rock Depths? That's not where I need to go. Unfortunate. Uh, this is a case where I wish I had gone in the Dollar Run Hearthstone. So now we are doing backtracking. Fun! Giant Sewer Rat. Uh, it's not the end of the world, though. In fact, you know what? Let, let's try something. I don't think I've ever done this in a speedrun before. It, would this actually be faster? Because I normally use gun shoes around this section. But this is faster than slow riding. But normally it doesn't matter, because if you're talking to the Darkmoon Fair guys, they're right outside anyway, so it's before you actually reach the canals. This is fun tech, though. Uh, actually, I haven't used gun shoes at all yet, because I've been in dungeons, so I haven't really gotten a chance to use them. I've been sitting on 40 of them, and I'm going to end up getting fast flying before I've even got a chance to burn through 10. Uh, let's see. Head up here. I should be able to talk to... Let's see if this works now that I'm on the WAD intro quest. It does. Okay, so it's not level-based. It's, you have to have the quest, and then I assume at this point, then I can just run into the Dark Portal, and then this won't take me to Shadowmoon Valley? Oh no. Get away from me. Get away from me. This should take me not to Shadowmoon Valley, but to... Perfect. Okay. Um, and now... We are going to go to the next stage of the run. I'm not going to stop the timer, but we are going to change things up because I'm going to now press exit game. Why am I pressing exit game in the middle of the speed run? Well, uh, my beautiful Microsoft Paint artwork, which should hopefully be showing. Is it working? Yes. Ah, the I pre-made that Microsoft Paint artwork before starting the, the recording. And I like I did fancy stuff in OBS to get it to like automatically pop up if I stop recording. Um, so you can see I am switching to the PTR. So let me get this loaded up real quick. It should hopefully, yeah, there we go. So now I'm on the PTR. I'm going to copy my account data. You can see all my characters there if you really care. Um, and I'm going to scroll all the way down, get Sugra, and take her, copy her over from live servers. And we're going to pick up where we left off on the PTR with a copied over character. Now, why am I doing this? Because this is going to seem demented to anyone who doesn't understand why. Well, there are changes to leveling in 10.1.5, and I forgot to turn on more mode. Okay, it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Um, We're fine. Uh, well, that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? Um, man, I see. I'm so used to like having to stop questing specifically to turn on war mode at level 20. And because I just blaze through it in dungeons, it just never occurred to me that I should. Yeah, whatever. Look, I, I'm a fucking hot mess today. All right. We're, um, it's it. Yeah, I don't, I don't fucking know. Uh, Dominate Mind, grab this, grab Holy Nova, grab that, uh, Angelic Feather, and Void Tendrils, uh, one more point, we take PI, this, 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 I looked into Shadow Priest builds ahead of time, and I have one more point, I want to take Shadow Crash, and I'm going to take Siphene, but I can't even use it yet, so it's a moot point. Uh, oh! My bars are still oh. My bars are still holy priest stuff. Uh dominate mine at one on shift H. Actually I want that on H there on shift H. Dispel magic on shift F. Uh no, that should be on shift F. This should be on I don't fucking know. Just take levitate off. Uh there's there's too many buttons, man. There's too many buttons. I did not expect to have to completely recreate my stuff after. Uh, we take Holy Nova, we keep it. I'm going to... Uh, I'm missing Vampiric Touch. Vampiric Touch. Um, 
So I put Shadow Root Pain, Vampiric Touch, and... Okay, that looks good. Shadow Crash is a 20 second cooldown, so I'm going to put that on there. Uh, Shadow Form? Do I just... That's a passive I just enable? Okay. Once again, never played this. No idea how it works. Um, Mind Flay. I believe Mind Flay is my filler. So I have Devouring Plague. Devouring Plague is my main insanity spender. So I will put that to be there. And that looks good. Holy Nova up there. I am actually going to be using Holy Nova. One thing that I didn't see any Shadow Priest builds recommending, which seems insane to me, is this combo. Uh, Rhapsody and Holy Nova. Right? Like, a lot of them just don't even run Holy Nova. What we've already seen how much damage Holy Nova does, right? And if I go fight these mobs, even as a Shadow Priest, you're going to see... Look at this. Holy Nova still does decent damage. Now, I would be killing it faster if I'm using Shadow Priest abilities, but that initial hit of Holy Nova actually did a sizable chunk of damage, because when I'm not using it, it stacks up, and it gets massively increased damage and healing. So if you just effectively use Rhapsody with Holy Nova as an AoE nuke, I mean, it's just a no-brainer talent pick that so many builds I've seen haven't recommended. And the moment I saw that, I'm like, oh, th this is Shadow Priest tech that I'm figuring out, right? It's, it's cool. Uh, what, uh, what am I missing? I'm sure I'm missing something, but I can't find it at the moment, so we're just going to roll with this. So... Mind Blasts, um, I'm pretty sure I keep my dots up in targets, and then I Mind Flay as fillers, or I keep, I'll make sure I use Mind Blast charges, we're just, we're gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna go, and I will figure this out on the fly. Um, but yeah, now we're swap, uh, switching to Shadow Priest now that we're on the PTR, so I think before I finished explaining why I'm on the PTR, I was figuring out Shadow Priest stuff, so... Yeah, there's leveling changes in patch 10.1.5, which is coming out um, in two weeks, or about like a week and a half at the time of recording. So obviously I want to test those changes, but I still want to get an accurate measure of how like the route's going to play out, especially with this stuff. And, you know, it's going to take a bit of refining. And because I end up doing a lot of my runs entirely on the PTR, I don't get a lot of time to, you know, actual test, actually test the dungeon running aspect of it. So I definitely wanted to do that here, and I also definitely wanted to do dungeon running on the priest runs, because if there's one thing I know how to do while leveling priests, it's do a lot of damage as a holier disc priest while leveling in dungeons. And I think that is such like an integral part of what makes priest leveling efficient, that I think it would be kind of wrong to do a priest run and not show it. So I knew I had to do the dungeons, but also the entire point of doing these testing runs is to test the new changes, because after all, I need to make updates to my leveling guide. So I was like, well, why don't I start the run on live servers and do dungeons? Because obviously you can only do dungeons on live servers, because on the PTR there's nobody to do dungeons with. And then, once I'm done with the dungeon section of the run, I copy my character over to the PTR and literally just pick up where I left off uh, on a carbon copy of the character. Why not? I've never done this before, but it's... Uh, you know, it, it, it works. It's effectively the exact same character. I carry over all of my exact same stuff. There is literally no difference. I didn't even stop the timer. So technically, if you want to really, like, uh, min-max the time and say that, like, you're not counting the two minutes or so, two, three minutes that it took me to swap to the PTR, yeah, sure. But I figure because that is something that I am actively doing in the middle of the run, I am very much... The type of person where I think true speedruns, you never pause the timer, right? If, if you're speedrunning something, it's how long it takes you from start to finish, right? Now, you could obviously argue that me switching to the PTR is like Omega Cheese, right? I think it's more, I am trying to create like an accurate simulation of what a speedrun might look like in two weeks so that I can get information for my guide. Uh, which is why I've been very clear about the fact that generally speaking these days, I don't really care if it's like something that I'm going to submit to speedrun.com. 
Um, so count it as a real speed run if you wish. If not, I don't really care. Um, yeah, the spell pushback is actually a little bit annoying. Uh, something that might make Void Elf good from a like actual damage dealing perspective while leveling. The only thing that I think might make Void Elf like not the best is just because Dark Iron Racial is so critical for speed leveling, it's kind of hard to do any real speed runs without it. But it seems like Shadow Priest makes pretty quick work of like two target stuff. And I know from looking ahead that later on in the tree, you get a lot of really good AoE stuff. It's one of the reasons why I wasn't too keen on doing Shadow Priest at low levels. Because Shadow Priest at low levels, like it, it has so many from what I can tell, right? Obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, or, or maybe I will find stuff out later on but it seems like shadow priest has so many like internal synergies that kind of feed off each other and a lot of those synergies you don't even get until higher levels so right now it just feels like i'm only working with half my kit and i'm already almost level 30 so i feel like until i'm able to get um a lot of the other talents that actually like interact with my uh what do you call them diseases are they diseases I mean, I guess they're dots, right? It's a matter of what actually they are. Uh, what we want to do? Do I really need body and soul? Eh, I'll take body and soul. It allows me to use power word shield as like a mini speed boost, and can never really be upset about a mini speed boost, right? Um. Let's see. What am I missing? Oh, I need to talk to Ariok. What am I missing in terms of gear? I got most stuff from that. I never got a belt. My bracers are still like, eh. So, belt and bracers would be the two biggest pickups. I'm not sure if any of the quests here reward it. Guess we'll see. Alright, I'm gonna do like a medium sized pull here. Uh, can do Devouring Plague. I did not mean to, um,. Did not mean to press Shadow Word Death. I hit the wrong button there. Uh, what is that? Mind Flay Insanity. Uh, one of my talents upgrades it into that, right? Mm. And then I can do... This. And dot you up. One of the main issues with Shadow Priest that makes it not the best while leveling is it doesn't have a lot of instant casts. Whenever you need to turret in order to deal damage, it's inherently a weak leveling spec, just because one of the key parts of leveling is being able to damage while moving. It's one of the nice things that made Holy so good for uh, dungeon leveling was the fact that whenever I was fighting trash, I could just keep jumping along and mashing holy nova while i moved i think honestly mashing holy nova might still be the best option here yeah because once i apply shadow word pain the instant damage isn't actually that much so as far as instant damage for shadow priest goes i think holy nova might genuinely be your best option yeah so you apply shadow word pain to all your targets and then if you're able to stay stationary you apply the rest of your stuff or you do like Shadow Crash or something. But something like this. And then I just Holy Nova spam as I go. And put up this. And then I can do Mind Blast. And then... Yeah, okay, that yeah, that feels decently good. About as well as I can expect it to feel. I also think there's maybe an argument to be made that... At this point, Holy might still be better, even for questing. Oh, it, it's hard to say. I also just, I do want to test Shadow at some point. I think we've had an entire hour of Holy Priest shenanigans, so I want to see how Shadow feels. Uh, there's our chess piece. Whoa. It's been been a long day i'm i'm gonna try to find like 
stuff to give commentary on, but I'll be completely honest, I am moderately tired. Uh, the only reason that I'm even doing the run right now, I considered, like, taking a nap before starting it and then doing it later. Like, a as we speak, it is 11 a.m., so it's not, it's like around noon and stuff, but I didn't, obviously, it's been like an hour and a half, and I kind of, I started preparation for this run all the way at, like, 7 a.m., so uh, 7 a.m. is when, like, I finally sat down and started doing, like, my test runs with Holy in the dungeons. And, um, should I just, like, I think if I just apply Shadow or Pain to, like, a million different things, that's probably the best method here. And then I just slowly rot out all of these mobs. And then as it goes on, I can start to single down some of the, um, lower health ones to finish off the events. Oh, yeah, and I should probably be using Shadow Crash as well. Fifty-four. Yeah, all that to say, I generally speaking try to keep up commentary throughout all my runs, but I just did another run, like literally a day ago, I guess at the time of recording. It feels like it's been a day, because it's like, I did the run, I slept, I woke up, I posted the run, and then I had like one day of free time, and already towards the end of that day I had to start preparing for this run. So... It feels like I almost literally just got out of doing uh, my last speedrun. So I'm still kind of tired from that. These things are... Uh, it, they don't, like, necessarily all take a lot of time to do. Like, the Windwalker Mun act actually didn't take a lot of time to set up. Because, first of all, I didn't have to do any research for the Windwalker Run. I did, like, a little bit of, like, you know, 30 minutes of jogging my memory. But Windwalker is something I play semi-regularly, and I've already done multiple world record attempts with it. So it's not like it's something that I'm really rusty on. Whereas in this case, I haven't played Holy and Disc in a very long time, so I at least had to kind of get used to that. And because I was doing dungeons, I felt like an extra pressure to study up on it. Because if I fuck up, then it's other people's lives in the line, right? So I definitely didn't want to make that mistake. And while I didn't want to do any practice with Shadow Priest ahead of time, I at least did research just so I'm, I don't want to sit here and read through every talent midway through the run. Definitely want to pick Whispering Shadows. Um, I also don't have... Oh, I was about to say I don't have Siphine to my bars. Yeah, that's because I, I forgot to turn on War Mode. Yeah, so one of the main reasons I decided to uh, go down this route early and take uh shadow crash and stuff it's because like i said shadow priest suffers from not having um the instant casts and since shadow crash can is instant cast you can use it while moving and it's really good aoe and that talent makes it apply vampiric touch that means that i no longer need to worry about actually casting um whatchamacallit about actually like hard casting my uh, uh, Vampiric Touch, because this will do it for me, so I can just do that. And then I didn't mean to... I keep accidentally hitting, um... And then here, I think I just do Mind Play? If the target had more health, I definitely would have applied Devouring Plague. But yeah, I keep hitting Shadow or Death when I mean to hit uh, the other one. Yeah, look at that. Holy Nova fucks. Even as Shadow Priest, I'm still just using Holy Nova. <laughs> it's still doing most of my AoE damage. I, I don't know. That, it's broken. It is an absolute crime that the Shadow Priest guides I found, not a single one mentioned using Rhapsody. That's the kind of thing where, like, literally, with zero knowledge of the spec, I could just tell you that that is going to be very strong. It's just, it's one of those no-brainer things of, like, oh, yeah, at, while leveling a healing and AoE damage ability, when you don't use it for X amount of time, it builds up stacks. It's like, well, yeah, literally, that means you get one use of a big AoE and healing nuke every single combat. Like, that is, that is just so, so strong. And also just having an instant ability that you can kite. Because right now, I don't really want to use Shadow Crash. 
Actually, I can use it here. And then while I kite, I'm just going to do that. Yeah, that actually feels pretty good. I think now that I'm getting into the flow of it, and actually doing it, now that I'm using Holy Nova more often, as like my AoE while moving, why is the Druid all the way in the corner here? That actually, that that felt pretty fucking nice. It takes some getting used to, right? Because, you know, you're multi-dotting, and then you're kind of like spamming and kiting. But it honestly, it feels like I'm playing Arcane Mage. Which... Arcane Mage is really good for leveling. So if something feels like Arcane Mage for leveling, that is a pro. Ooh, like, yeah. This mob normally takes a little bit of time to kill, and that that actually, uh, he got fucking shredded. Admittedly, I had, I had what? Ooh, I accidentally, I had what? P.I., Shadow Fiend, Devouring Plague, Shadow Crash, and I got like a proc on that thing. So I had a lot of stuff going. Uh, yeah, so one of the nice things about PTR is I automatically learn riding training. So that's one of the reasons I don't need to get the dollar on Hearthstone. Because now I don't need to constantly go back and forth. I think I can just, yeah, spam holding over here. And the healing on it really is not bad at all. Like, that that actually kept me up. I'm at 100%. I don't, like, has Holy Nova always been available to Shadow Priest? I could have sworn that back in the day, only Holy had Holy Nova. Like, that was, in from my memory, the main reason why Holy Priest was actually so good for leveling. Because there was a long period of time where through all forms of content, you would just level as holy as a priest. Like, even questing. Holy was just better. That's just how it was. Specifically because of Holy Nova. So, if Shadow now has access to the thing that made Holy Priest the best spec for sh or for priest leveling, then, obviously, outside of low-level dungeons, right? Because no matter how good Shadow is for dungeons, the reason that you're going to play a healer is just for queue times. It's just a reality of the game. DPS queues are not fast. So, that would not change regardless, but... Yeah, if if I have all of the pros of Holy, but with more single target damage through Shadow, I mean, that's just really fucking good, right? I just, just multi-dot away. Yeah, and I'm just using... Holy Nova is my main AoE, and it's, yeah, still doing most of my damage. This is so tough. <laughs> All right. I, hey, I'm not complaining, though. It means I get to play a Shadow Priest without actually playing a Shadow Priest. I am just, I am a Holy Priest in disguise. And, yeah, spam Holy Nova, spam Holy Nova. And... Then I'm just going to double mind blast this guy, and that should be enough. And then, yep, yeah, dots finished him off. And I can just heal while moving. Wait, this is actually kind of cracked. <laughs> wait, this is kind of insane. <laughs> okay, wait, is, is Shadow Priest actually good? Is Shadow Priest actually meta for leveling now with Holy Nova? I did not realize that it, it was as good as the Holy version of it. This is actually kind of a game changer. Like, people were telling me that Shadow Priest just on its own without Holy Nova. Well, nobody mentioned Holy Nova, but people are just like, oh yeah, Shadow Priest, like, it, it has pretty good single target. The only weakness is that it's a bit squishy still, and it has weak AoE. And it's like, did none of them know that Holy Nova is just a button that you're allowed to press? It's like, this is not weak AoE. This is actually really fucking strong AoE. And insane survivability. Because you can just kite while doing your full damage rotation. Let me get him in. I'll do Mind Blast. And you can heal while moving at a pretty fast rate, too. Like... Yeah, the fact that Holy Nova also does a respectable amount of healing is... another thing that's really good. Because... One of the issues with, like, Mage, for instance, is Mage, 
the problem that I have with Arcane is, and don't get me wrong, Arcane is actually quite good for leveling. But I tend to struggle with it, specifically because if you take damage, which obviously, ideally, you try to kite as much as possible so you don't take damage, but then you kind of have to sit there and, you know, heal back up. And, like, I've seen good Arcane Mages play, and I am not a good Arcane Mage, because it's just not something I have experience with. And they'll be, like, kiting perfectly, they'll take barely any damage, they'll be keeping their barrier up so they have the absorb. And you can definitely play Arcane kiting just outside of the enemy's range and taking minimal damage and using your, like, spells and abilities and stuff to mitigate damage. It's possible. But if you make, like, a few mistakes, right, you do need to stop and you do need to just conjure food and eat. And they do have the ability to do that, right? So it's actually pretty nice. So it's one of the reasons why Arcane is good. But the fact that as a Shadow Priest right now, I can just fucking do that, and it just one-taps him while moving. It, I mean, it, it's literally just, this feels like I'm playing Arcane Mage without any of the downsides. Arcane Mage with healing. And I guess the only downside is now you don't have portals, but not having portals is like a non-existent downside now because of the fact that they changed how riding training works. So you no longer need to go back to main cities. So the main thing that Mage brought to the table is now devalued, and also Dark Iron does the same thing. Uh, this is kind of crazy. I mean, I... No complaints here, right? Because I have I have the perfect clickbait title now. I don't know. I wonder if I actually named the video. What I have in my head right now is something like, I finally speed ran a priest. It, and then in all caps, like, it's it was insane or something like that. And then I could put like in the thumbnail, like, my fastest time yet or something like that. Because at this rate, no lie, like... I think that this is actually world record pace, which is fucking wild. Oh, I fucking use Shadow or Death again. Like, I'm not even playing well. I'm playing like a fucking chimpanzee, and I'm actually just, things are just dying on a quest that I don't know how to play. It, that, like, I, the sign of a good leveling class is something where you can, like, literally just mash buttons, and it, it just, it, things happen. Like, Guardian Druid. Like, one of the reasons why I say Windwalker Monk is good, but, like, I don't necessarily recommend it to everybody, and a lot of times I think you should level as Brewmaster, is because getting the most out of Windwalker Monk isn't actually that easy. There is, like, a certain skill, especially without War Mode, it's much harder, but even with War Mode, like, knowing the right times to use Fist of Fury and saving it for periods of high damage so you can, like, parry all of it, and you don't really have great healing as a monk, unless you're using your cooldowns properly. It's not like this, where I'm literally just pressing one button, and it's doing all of my damage and keeping me alive through all incoming damage. Like, it genuinely doesn't feel like I'm playing a caster. This is like, I tried... Man, I, I, I should have been trying more specs more often, because I, I tried Affliction Warlock on stream like, six months ago or so, because it, it's... Affliction Warlock won the poll that I put on my channel for, like, what I was going to stream that weekend. Which, by the way... Oh, fuck! I forgot to announce it at the start. Um, I mean, I already announced it in my, um... In my last video. But, yeah, so I'm going to be streaming tomorrow, Saturday, at, uh, 11 a.m. And... What was it? Saturday... Saturday the 1st, yeah. So, tomorrow, Saturday, at 11 a.m., and I'm going to be putting up a poll on YouTube alongside this video. Uh, it won't be directly connected. I'll just be putting it up at the exact same time. I'll put a link in the description, link in the comment, uh, pinned comment and stuff like that. And you get to vote on what class and spec I'm going to play. And I haven't decided fully what the options are. I still need to look into that. I'm definitely going to put Mage on there because I know a few people said they wanted to see another Mage run. Because I've done Mage leveling before, like I was just talking about Arcane. But I've never done a Frost or Fire speedrun, and somebody on my Discord was talking about how in 10.1.5, Frost and Fire are getting, like, really nice changes that'll actually make them, like, on par with Arcane for leveling. That seems interesting. I don't know if it'll be better than Arcane. And it's one of those things where, like I said, I already was not good at playing Arcane. Like, I tried it, and I... It's just, I'm not a mage player, man. I, I am not good at mage. I've just accepted that over the years. Um, 
And I've played Arcane infinitely more than I've played Frost or Fire. So if I can't even play Arcane that well, you know, it's it's probably not going to go too well if I try to play Frost or Fire. I actually, come to think of it, I've played... I played Fire a little bit back in Nihilotha. Because I had this, like, period of I had no idea what I wanted to play. And I wanted to try something different. So... My friend recommended, like, a million different specs to try, and one of them was Nihilotha Fire Mage. And it was, like, it was fun, but it, it just wasn't really my thing. It was like, yeah, I could do a lot of damage, but the playstyle just doesn't mesh with me. And then I just ended up going back to Vengeance Demon Hunter and Brewmaster Monk. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm a tank main. You know, that it's just what I do, right? But I tried other stuff, including Fire Mage at that point in time. So I, I at least gave it a fair shake uh, for, a, for a point in time. Oh, but yeah, that'll definitely be on there. I know for a fact Enhancement Shaman is going to be on the poll. I'm not sure if I put Ellie Shaman. I, I don't really want to put Ellie Shaman because I've done a little bit of Ellie Shaman testing before and it was at the request of um, viewers. Ellie Shaman is one of those where like, it's just not faster. Because I know for a fact that anything that Shaman can do, it's going to be best done. Or why am I on a ground up? Yeah. Anything Shaman can do, it's going to be best done on an enhancement. Just because it's melee. Right? So, I I know for a fact that Ellie Shaman is somewhat turdy. And it, it's probably decent. I don't think it's terrible. You know, I... I Try to be four, and it's not the worst, but it does suffer from some of the stuff that old Shadow Priest suffered from, which is just the turdy playstyle. And it's one of the reasons why I would say, while Warlock is good, even when I played Affliction, and I was, am I going to get credit? There we go. Like, even when I played Affliction on stream, and I said at the time that I was pleasantly surprised with how good Affliction was, and especially like as I got to higher levels and I figured out like how I was supposed to do my AoE rotation. And I was just blowing shit up, and it was really fun. It still felt like it just wasn't really... Uh, it wasn't really that fast, just because you did need to like kind of turret a little bit. So you would do these big pulls, and Warlock has like insane survivability, right? So it won't die. But you have to like do all these big pulls, sit there and like cast Seed of Corruption and, and all that stuff, and you don't have enough instant casts to really allow you to kite. So Shadow Priest, from every time I tested it before in the past, was exactly the same. It didn't have the, um, can I interact? No, only druids can do that while mounted. Uh, it didn't have the, um, the damage to reliably uh, kill stuff while kiting, because it, it didn't have Holy Nova. Uh, but now it has Shadow Crash at this level. It has Holy Nova. It, it can just do the exact same thing that Arcane Mage can. And, you know, it avoids one of the biggest pitfalls of Warlock. What are the other casters? I'm trying to think. What am I forgetting? Okay, we do Shadow Crash. Nice. Yeah, that felt really good. Like that, that was a solid AoE pull. Like, that's the type of pull that I would have just done on Guardian Druid. And one of the other things is... Shadow Priest has a spammable, like, roundup tool, which is something that, actually, I don't even think Arcane Mage has. I don't, does Arcane, yeah, Arcane doesn't have a ranged spammable roundup tool. Sorry, I'm adjusting my headphones, so I'm, like, keyboard turning. Um, Arcane Mage has to get into melee to round stuff up with um, Arcane Explosion. And one of the things that makes... Um, Guardian Druid's so good is that you can just spam Moonfire and round up everything and then cleave it down. And on Windwalker Monk, you know, even though normally you never use Crackling Jade Lightning, in my speedruns you'll see me using Crackling Jade Lightning as Windwalker, because I'll just tag, 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 tag. So it's not ideal, but Windwalker at least is able to use that ability to, like, tag a bunch of mobs. Uh, and it's spammable. That's the important thing. It needs to be spammable, right? Because, like, if you have slow AoE casts, like, if you're Arcane Blasting, sure. But that would be the equivalent of me Vampiric touching each one. Which, at that point, it's it's just not fast. The key is being able to do it all really quickly. I'm guessing I do this. 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 Holy shit, that single target burst. 
<laughs> Holy shit! That single target first. That's like as fast as a woodwalker with touch of death, man. God damn! I don't know if I played that right, but that felt pretty fucking good. I don't really know how else I would have sequenced those abilities. That I I forgot to use volcanic potion, which meant that I could have done even more damage. Uh, oh, I just talked to him. There we go. Uh, and then I want to pick up the. Ah, uh, what, what? Uh, problems. Okay, there we go. And there should be yeah. There's a treasure right around there. And what do I want here? Twist of fate, I guess. Uh, void eruption. And. Driven to Madness. But Void Eruption on Control T. So does this give me my dollar on Hearthstone? Or Garrison Hearthstone, I mean. Same deal. And now it's oh yeah, it's a toy. It's another change that honestly doesn't really have any major impact, but it's worth noting. Uh so I'm gonna at least do the quest to get the people to return to work. And I think in order to get the, um, yeah, the Alliance quest isn't too inefficient. Mm, do I do this? I don't need to, because now I have the Garrison Hearthstone, so I want to make sure that I have the, the War Mode buff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Hearth to Blackrock Depths. This is going to let me quickly bounce the store bin, turn on war mode, then I dark iron mole machine, and then we head to lock mode on. Actually, do I do lock mode on? Yeah, I do lock mode on. Normally, I like to start lock mode on a little bit later, like around level 40, but at this rate, I'll probably just start it early. It's probably faster. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably faster. All right, pop over here, turn on war mode. Scythe-fiend is yet another cooldown for me to... Man, I have so many fucking cooldowns. I'm just going to move this to S3. It's a, basically a speed boost. So I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, now I have all of my big nukes on one thing, and I think I get even more. Right, what do I want to pick here? Uh, let me refer to... I have a cheat sheet. Where's my cheat sheet? Oh no, I lost my cheat sheet. I accidentally closed it. Ah, where's my cheat sheet? Where's my cheat sheet? The talents. Um, do I want Mind Spike or Shadowy Insight? Uh, I want Shadowy Insight. Yes, because that lets me sometimes cast Mind Blast while moving. And then after that, I go here, Mind Spike. Yeah, I go Mind Spike. And then... Then I go Ancient Madness. Then Mind Devourer? Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, Where's my Mole Machine? Mole Machine. There we go. Uh, Eastern Kingdoms. Iron Forge. And away we go. Close my cheat sheet real quick. Yeah, maybe I'm not. I don't think I'm on world record pace, come to think of it. What would it be? I would have to be three hours, 23 minutes long loading screen. I don't know. I I mean, the end of the run, like, we're technically already past the midway point of the run. In terms of um, level. Hmm. Hmm, that's a tough call. It's a tough call. Because, like, Lock Modon is absurdly fast, right? It's about as fast as Hillsbrad, if not faster. So, still having all of that left is really, 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 really helpful. I also, I want to check this. There's a chance there's one rare mob up around this area, I think. 
that a rare? No, that's a quest mob. What am I thinking of? There's there's some rare along the flight path to um Lockmodon, which I don't usually check for unless I'm on the PTR, but if I'm on the PTR, fuck it. Why not? Uh but yeah, huh? I have I have an hour and I have an hour and a half actually. I have almost exactly an hour and a half. Hour and a half to do round 25 levels with the last 10 being the easiest. And I still have all of Lockmod on. Mm. It's not impossible. I definitely have a chance of beating my world record here, which would be hilarious. Absolutely fucking hilarious if I managed to do it on a Shadow Priest. It would also mean, if I managed to beat my world record here, I am definitely doing another actual world record attempt, right? Because this is meant to be the dumb fucking, I've never played a Shadow Priest run, how do I play this thing? This isn't meant to be like, my new world record is with a Shadow Priest, the, my first time playing it. Because then I'm going to look like such a fucking ass, man. Imagine if I start the run saying, I'm going to suck, guys. Ha ha ha. Oh, can't wait. Can't or words. I bet you can't wait to watch me suck ass at Shadow Priest. And then I casually get like a new best time. You know, that would I would look like such a fucking asshole because, you know, most people would be like, oh, the whole thing staged. He played Shadow Priest for years. Or, I don't fucking know. But no, um, it's not actually Shadow Priest, right? I mean, actually, the dungeon spamming definitely helps. I would say, if anything, so far this run has been due to Holy Priest and the ridiculously good dungeon spam RNG. I would say, actually, Escape from Durnhold made it not ridiculously good. It ended up only being above average. Which still, hey, I will take above average dungeon RNG. Um. Oh, fuck. I forgot I changed my binds. Uh, yeah, I just changed Holy Nova, so... Oh, instant cast mind blast? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Uh, so I want to look for chests. Chests, and then there's a rare trog somewhere around here, which should be up. There's a chance that it is also inside the cave, though, so there's no guaranteeing that we'll actually find it. At least not right now. I don't love Holy Nova on Q. I'm going to put it on 5. This feels so much easier to click. I don't like putting rotation buttons on my stuff up there. I don't think... Yeah, I also don't need to loot these mobs, right? So we can just keep, keep churning through them. The Shadow Crash... Looking for rares, and... Oh, I need to be looting them. I do need to loot them. Shit. For Trog Stone Tooth. Uh, rares and chests. Rares and chests. Any chests up there? Chests up there. Chests up there. No. How many did I not loot? I didn't loot that entire stack, so that should be all that I need. Wow, that was bad RNG. Okay, I'm going to kill the trogs in this little area because there is a chance that there's a chest here and I'm not going to come back to this little section. So that way, if there is a chest, I find it now. It appears there is not a chest. Mind Blast. Oh yeah, speaking of... Uh, I just saw... You know, the Oldman out in the distance, Oldman entrance. So, one little thing that I can talk about, because I said, I was starting to say before, before I got sidetracked and whatnot, that, um, don't expect me to be like super duper high energy and be doing like a ton of commentary during this run, because the reality is, I just did the previous run. I am kind of tired. Uh, I'll be doing my best. But something that I do want to talk about, uh, because it's honestly been my main hobby and like side project recently is I've been doing a ton of research into stuff that got removed in Cataclysm. Um, in fact, on the topic of stuff that's removed in Cataclysm, one of the first things that I'm going to do upon finishing this run, because I wanted to do it last night, but then I decided instead of doing it last night, I would 
be proactive and start doing research for the Shadow Priest run early. And good thing I did, because I ended up going above and beyond with like all the shit that I started looking up. Um I also what do I want to uh, hold on, hold on. I want to put this put you here. Yeah, I want the two fiends, Shadow Fiend and Psy Fiend, to be on the same general button. I think that makes it more consistent. I also want to start using Void Eruption more. Because it's an AoE. That's good. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to solo Zul Grub later today on Classic. Is, as I mentioned in the last run, I've been playing a lot of Classic recently, been really enjoying Wrath Classic, and just, you know, having a lot of fun with it. Um, so I'm going to try to do that, but also I've mostly been doing a lot of research into the removes, like BOEs and stuff like that. And I actually found an interesting thing that I, I, I've been kind of operating under a misconception for many, many years. And from what I can tell, a large chunk of the WoW community has been as well. And I'm surprised that it hasn't been noticed yet. So if you know anything about like rare transmog hunting, and I were to ask you, what are some of the rarest transmogs in the game from Classic WoW? You'd probably say the Oldemon transmogs or the Nomergon transmogs or something from the old Cata dungeons. I would say outside of things that were removed. Obviously, they're uh, and I'm specifically talking like BOE transmogs, right? So there's a lot of obviously quest rewards that you just can't obtain anymore. Um, but out of the BOE transmogs, there's a lot that are still in the game, but have like a really low drop chance or from a really obscure source compared to what they were in um, Kata. I've created like an extensive list. There's a lot of them. There's like hundreds of BOE items that many of which I've never even heard of. And they all got removed in Cataclysm. But what's interesting are the ones that are, you know, like super duper ultra rare. And obviously some of them are completely removed, right? So oh, what is this? Void Bolt? Um, yeah, so some of them are completely removed. Obviously those ones are worth a small fortune, right? Uh, and I think one of the more interesting ones is like, um, a lot of people may not know this, but the actual rarest uh, drop out of, or one of the rarest, but I think it might genuinely be one of the only cases of this being the case of like items from cataclysm dungeons um that got changed is an item called vicar's robe which dropped off a uh, razor fen crawl of all places and it actually got removed entirely so obviously that one's extremely rare because it's completely gone and the funny thing is it's actually so laughably easy to get right now in classic i already have picked up a bunch of them because, right, I've created this exhaustive list of, like, hundreds of different items. And what I do is every single morning, I log onto my banking alt, I check the auction house, and I just type every single one of those items on my list into the auction house. And I am sitting on, like, a dragon's horde of these things. I have hundreds of transmog items that will be worth, like, a small fortune in Cataclysm, if Cataclassic ever comes out. I also didn't get the Trog Rare here, which is odd. Um, but yeah, sitting on a small fortune of rare items. Wait, I actually didn't consider this. The PTR was down earlier today. I think that might have reset rare mob timers. That might mean I, I will actually find no rare mobs during this run, which would be disastrous. Because I usually operate under the assumption that I'm getting at least one or two. That would be really fucking bad. Uh, let's hope that's not the case. It also probably means I won't find a single chest. Man, that really... That's really going to suck, actually. Um, damn. That only just occurred to me. Uh, lame. I'll put that on control one or something. I'll fucking... I don't know what I'm going to do. I have to test it on the 10.1.5 PTR. There's not much I can do about that. The only thing I could have done is maybe delete it, but I didn't even consider how that would have an impact. Anyways. Um... Yeah, so, like, Vicar's Robe, that item that I talked about that's straight up removed, because it drops off a mob in Razorfen Crawl that just got changed. So Razorfen Crawl itself received fairly minimal changes, but that mob in particular, since it no longer exists, and it was a drop off of only that guy, it's now gone. And they never re-added it through any form of, like, salvage crate or whatever. 
So it's like an ultra super duper rare item. And I find it interesting because also on top of what I just said, you know, of it, uh, uh, what should we call it? Not being that rare currently in Razor Fen Crawl in Classic. It's actually a green item. And the thing about green items like that, oh, I can actually yeah, do the Honor the Flame quest and I can refresh my Midsummer buff, which is nice. Yeah, I can just do yeah, Honor the Flame. Cool. And we're just going to click on the pole. This works. Why is this so... And this pole thing is so crap. I have to click on it like 50 times. And it just doesn't work. I give up. <laughs> Fuck this experience buff. It takes forever to build it up, and half the time when I click on it, it just doesn't even give it to me. I I don't know. Um, very lame. Very lame. Um, but yeah, the interesting thing about Vicar's robe in particular is that it's actually a green item. So what I've noticed is that a lot of the really rare uh, items that got removed in Classic, actually a ton of them are greens, and Classic has, like, a lot of generic world drop greens, right? So what I think is happening here, at least on, on Classic servers, is that a lot of people are getting these really rare, unique greens that are completely unassuming. It's like some dumb fuck gloves with, like, plus five spirit on it. And they're just like, well, this is trash. I'm just going to throw it in the auction house for five gold. And then here I am with my list of ultra rare items that got removed or made extremely hard to get in cataclysm and i'm like all right let's see anyone selling this and oh it's only up there for five gold great uh i can sit on this for the next year and then uh sell it for a small fortune because nobody would think that this random ass green is going to be removed and i think what a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of rares like a ton of them uh especially in lock mode on actually have special items on their loot table that seem like they have very generic names but then if you go to wowhead and check it'll say like this only drops off um this one particular mob so it actually makes it kind of difficult to farm in many cases and one of the funny things is in my uh like leveling a fresh account video i actually got one of those items because what blizzard ended up doing with a lot of them is almost seemingly arbitrarily some of those like unique drop items became uh like extremely rare and some of them got removed entirely and then some had their drop rate completely unchanged like for instance scowl a rare that i've killed a few times in hillsbred foothills it has the exact same drop rates on retail right now for its unique items as it does in classic you can even see me looting one of them in my a fresh account run. So it's completely unchanged, right? But then within the same zone, you have Tamra Stormpike, which has a, a unique drop called Humbert's Chest, along with a few other mobs in the area. And Humbert's Chest on Classic is a dime a dozen. It drops super frequently. And yet Humbert's Chest, when I ended up getting it on that fresh account speed run, as you can see if you watch that video, uh, it was worth like... 500,000 gold. And on that topic, by the way, um, if you want something to laugh at, or rather someone to laugh at, so uh, here's the deal with that super rare 500k chess piece that I looted on my French account run. What kind of ended up happening is I did that run, and I was planning on doing a bunch of others, even just later that week. And I, or then uh, Patch what was it? Uh, patch 10.1 got released and wow. So I was like, okay, well, I'll do all my patch 10.1 stuff. And then once patch 10.1 is settled, I'll go back to finishing up my videos for fresh account leveling. And then within like the first week or two of patch 10.1, they put up the 10.1.5 servers, which officially confirmed that Chromie time was being uh, made available to all players regardless of, you know, whether they were a brand new player or not. So that kind of defeated the entire purpose of me doing a fresh account run. And all of that to say, because I had assumed that I'd be doing more fresh account testing, I put the super rare 500k BOE up on the auction house on my fresh account. And then I didn't touch my account for over a month. And in case you aren't sure what happens to uh, unsold items on the auction house, 
if you haven't played in a month, they're gone forever and unrecoverable. So my auction failed to sell. Then it went into my mailbox. I didn't touch that account for a month. And then I came back a month later and it was just gone. 500k into the abyss. So, um, yeah, that, uh, that really sucks. <laughs> I'm trying to make it into a funny story, but it, man, it, it really did actually suck. Um, and the worst part is I only realized like a week or two ago while I was making that list of super rare items, because I'm sitting there, like I'm playing classic and I have like, uh, whatchamacallit, like wow had open on my second monitor and I'm looking through all these rare mob loot lists. And then I get to Tamra Stormpike and I see Humbert's chest on the loot table in classic. And then I see that it got removed and I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. That's the item that I ended up getting my classic speed run. And then, pause. Wait a second. That's the item that I ended up getting in my fresh account speedrun. Uh, uh, what what happened to that? Oh wait, yeah, wait. Didn't I put it on the auction house? Huh. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. That could be bad, right? Uh, let me go check the timestamp on my video. When when did I post that video? And then I realized, oh shit, I posted that video in April. It is now June. I definitely put that up on the auction house. Fuck. And I logged out, logged into my fresh account, checked, and yeah, it was it was gone. And it was like the most soul-crushing realization out of nowhere over a month later of just, oh, fuck. Ah. But yeah, anyways, I got completely sidetracked from my original point. And um, at this point, also, it is very clear that every single rare mob in lock mode on is down that's of the server restart earlier this morning so i'm gonna go ahead and just say there is zero chance that i'm getting world record like rare mobs don't matter for casual leveling it's only gonna mean like i'll lose 10 to 15 minutes but 10 to 15 minutes when you're going for a world record that's like that that is just a death blow right there zero rares zero treasure chests like this is going to be worse rng than i would get on live servers which is uh oh boy we have the thing that i keep trying to say um the main realization that i made of which items from dungeons are the rarest or which items are rarest which i just kind of gave away it's the ones from dungeons but the thing that i never realized is it's not actually a wrath or a cataclysm change. So a lot of people associate the items from Ultimon and the items from Nomergon as being really rare as of cataclysm. And in fact, if you go into comments on the Wowhead page, you'll find multiple comments stating as fact that with the changes in cataclysm to the old world zones, a lot of these items have become extremely rare. And it makes sense, right? If you think about it, it's like, okay, well... Uh, which, which expansion massively overhauled the entire game world and changed up a lot of the leveling things and, you know, made it so a lot of the items became really rare. And yeah, Cataclysm. And that's the thing. While doing research, there's a ton of instances of items being removed from, like, these world drop rares uh, or becoming extremely rare. And like I said before, there's items like Vicar's Robe, where in the minor redesign they gave to Razor Fen Crawl, they removed that singular mob among a few others, but that mob just ha so happened to drop a rare item that no other mob did. And therefore it became extremely rare. But what a lot of people don't realize is that items like Vicar's Robe, which got removed in Cataclysm, are the exception, not the rule. And you may be confused if you know about rare transmog, because you may know of items like Pendulum of Doom, or the Jackhammer, or Hotshot Pilot's Glove, or some of the really, really, really rare collectible items that are worth millions of gold on retail today. You might be saying, like, Harlden's crazy, what does he mean that those items didn't actually become rare in Cataclysm? And that's because they didn't actually become rare in Cataclysm, they became rare in Burning Crusade. And I can, I have not found a single comment actually saying this. But, or I have not found a single comment connecting the fact that the items actually became rare in Burning Crusade, but there is absolute undeniable proof, uh, proof both in terms of patch notes and Wowhead comments, that 
in the Burning Crusade, in patch 2.3, a lot of dungeon levels were significantly changed. And they were completely unchanged from patch 2.3 all the way through Cataclysm. The only thing that Cataclysm did is within the... It changed, made very slight tweaks, which we'll get to. The, the irony of some of the catac Cataclysm tweaks is really funny. Uh, but it made very slight tweaks, but most of the tweaks were to the, like, random dungeon finder Q level. So it would say, instead of requiring, like, level 40 to Q for Ultimon, you now could Q for Ultimon at level 37, or something like that. Which has nothing to do with the actual dungeon level, that's just the level in which you're allowed to enter Ultimon. It has absolutely no impact on the item drops, whatsoever. So, those items, Pendulum of Doom... Uh, jackhammer, hotshot pilot's gloves, all the classic super rare items that people associate with becoming hard to get um, in Cataclysm, they're already ultra rare in Wrath of the Lich King Classic right now. And from what I can tell, they have been ultra rare ever since TBC Classic came out. Because generally speaking, Classic operates off the final patch, and if this was a change that was made in patch 2.3 of TBC, then the moment that TBC pre-patch hit, way back when, all of those items immediately became rare. And that sucks for people like me, who, from the very beginning, I was planning on farming a lot of those items in Wrath Classic or TBC Classic, or just before Cata Classic came out, because I always wanted to farm the Oldemon items. And I always been told, right? Oh, it was a change that happened in Cataclysm, which makes sense. But no, it actually wasn't. It, it was way, 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 way earlier than that. And the irony of the Cataclysm dungeon changes is that in many cases, it actually made it easier to acquire many of these items. For instance, right now, in uh, Wrath of the Lich King Classic, the, uh, the items in Shadowfang Keep are at around item level 25. And as of patch 2.3, the mobs within Shadowfin Keep have been dropped uh, to level 20 or level 21. And in case you were unfamiliar with everything that I'm talking about, basically the way that it works is this. Uh, mobs have items on their loot table. The, the game will tell them, these are the items that you are allowed to drop, right? And the mo mobs generally have a higher chance to drop items of a lower item level than they are. So the lower the item level of the thing on their loot table, the um, the higher the chance the mob has to drop it. Now, I did spend a lot of, tr of time trying to find the exact math behind this. I could not find a single post anywhere on the internet that at least I was able to find that actually confirmed the exact math behind it. But it is generally regarded as fact that, um, the, uh, that that's how the drop rates work. That it has something to do with the item level, and that the lower the item level, or the higher the item level of the item, the lower the chance that it has to drop. And then obviously you have things like the the rarities have an impact, right? So an item of common rarity uh, is going to have a higher chance to drop than an item of um, uncommon rarity. And this is all specifically with like world drop items. So Items like uh, on a boss's loot table. So if I were to open up the dungeon journal right now and I were to take a look at dungeons, Algathar Academy, uh, obviously this this is more so for classic, right? A lot of this stuff um, doesn't really exist. So yeah, maybe it would be better if I just found an old dungeon. So let's look at classic. And then on the topic of this dungeon, Oldemont. So if I look at, let's say, Arcadus, right? Arcadus on his actual loot table as a guaranteed uh, of these things, right? These are the items that are always going to appear from Arcadus. So when you kill him, one of these items will drop. That is just an independent thing, right? That is just the game says one of these items will drop, etc. But the world drop thing is, from what I can tell, a separate role that happens. Whenever you kill any mob, it'll check to see, are there any additional world drop items that I can give this player? And then it picks from the table. Sometimes you get no additional loot. Sometimes you get only the guaranteed loot, like the one piece off Arcadis' loot table. Sometimes you get a uh, sharp dollar on cheddar, a white food item. Um, sometimes you get Pendulum of Doom, right? And, and it just depends. But the rarer the quality and the higher the item level, uh, the lower the chance that particular item has to appear on the loot table. 
Now, why that is relevant is because when Old Mon first came out in WoW Classic, Arcadus was level 47. And all of the items, or all, all the bosses in the second half of Oldemon were around that level. They were within the 45 to 47 range, with Arcadus being the top at 47. And all of the BOEs within that section of Oldemon that dropped off those mobs were around the same item level. They were anywhere from item levels 43 to 45. So the idea is, of course, the Jackhammer, which is the only of the BOE items at item level 45, would have the lowest chance to drop because it would be the highest, so it would be rare. But then the items at level 43, or item level 43, would have a higher chance to drop because the mobs are around level 45, and the Papal Fez, which is one of the item level 43 items, would have a, therefore, higher chance to drop off those mobs. Unfortunately, when Blizzard did the Ultimon rework back in patch 2.3, uh, one of the things that got changed is the level of the mobs. And the mobs got dropped all the way from 45 to 47 down to 40. And this is a problem. Because now instead of the mobs being higher level than the items they drop, they are now lower level than the items they drop. So it turned these existing items that were meant to be rare rewards that you would see maybe one in a thousand mob kills into stuff that you would see only 1 in 12,000, I think was approximately the, the math, mob kills off specific mobs. So it would have to be off Arcadis, um, Arcadis, Ironea, a few of the uh, golems in the later half of the dungeon, anything that is level 40, because that is the highest level that mobs can get within Ultavon. They have the highest chance to drop. Um, so that is a massive swing, right? Like going from 1 in... Uh, which we call like one in a thousand to one in 12,000. And now you have less mobs that can even potentially drop it. So realistically, the chance for you to get it off the entire dungeon is even lower. It's crazy how rare they became. And that all happened in patch 2.3. And what's interesting is that in Cataclysm, some of that was actually reverted, not for Ultimon. So Cataclysm didn't help the Oldemon situation at all. It kept all of the Oldemon items just as rare as they were before. Uh, I need to click this off. There we go. Now we get the buff. Uh, and then... Yeah, I don't think I change anything else. I pick up this quest. And then I'll pick up... Where is it? This one. And then I go down to the Murloc area. Yeah, unfortunate about the rares. Um, honestly, though, I'm kind of glad that I'm not going to end up beating my world record. Because this means that I just have um, yet another attempt to set up that perfect run. And we can get RNG that was just as good as this with the dungeons. Except we can get actual good rare mob RNG. And uh, that'll make it even faster, right? So, uh, And I'll be on a Guardian Druid, which is still... You know, even though Shadow Priest is feeling pretty fast... And at this point, I'm, like, half paying attention and stuff is still dying, which, like I said, hallmark of a good uh, leveling class. Um, I still think I could do this infinitely faster with Guardian Druid, which is not a big surprise, right? Um, but yeah, so what's funny about the Cataclysm, right, is the same changes that happened to Ultimon, of the item level being unchanged, but the mob level changing, happened to many different dungeons. So it happened to Nomergon, and that... Didn't really get many changes. Um, and it happened to Shadowfang Keep. In fact, Shadowfang Keep had it worse. Shadowfang Keep, the mobs were around level 27. It was like 26 or 27. And the items went from 24 to, or no, 23 to 25, I believe. I forget the exact range. But like Archmage Aragal got taken down all the way from level like 26 to 20. So about as big of a swing as um, Oldemon had. So those items right now on Wrath of the Lichkin Classic, like Assassin's Blade, Gloom Shroud Armor, those items are currently as rare, if not rarer, than stuff like Pendulum of Doom and Papal Fez and all of the really well-known super rare dungeon drop BOEs. But what's funny is that with the change to Shadowfang Keep in... Um, in Cataclysm, they actually adjusted the item level of a lot of the BOEs and brought it down 
specifically for the ones in Shadowfin Keep, not any of the others. So one of the reasons why currently on live servers, Assassin's Blade, while still very rare, um, is not nearly as rare as stuff like Pendulum of Doom is because Cataclysm made it easier to get. So Cataclysm actually undid some of the damage to the drop rates that happened back in BC. Uh, and also, Nomergon to a lesser extent did that. Nomergon had a very small change. Um, McEngineer Thermaplug, however you say his name, the final boss of Nomergon, as of Wrath of the Lich King Classic right now, his level is, I believe, 28. And in Cataclysm, his level got buffed to 29. And that may not seem like much, but considering all of the BOEs are like item level 32 or 33 for Nomergon, that one level gives you an exponentially higher chance to obtain um, BOEs from Nomergon. You know, it's still like Hotshot Pilot's Gloves, one of the Nomergon BOEs are still some of the rarest or one of the rarest BOEs in the game. And yet it could have been even worse if it wasn't for Cataclysm. Which is kind of funny because... I had been operating under this assumption the entire time that, you know, a lot of people called Cataclysm the expansion that ruined a lot of the drop rates in these dungeons. And then when I actually look into it, Burning Crusade ruined the drop rates. And Cataclysm, in many cases, fixed the drop rates, which is just a complete turnaround from the story that I see in a lot of uh, Wowhead comments. And I just, I think that's really funny. But... What makes it a little bit worse, unfortunately, is that now it means that if you didn't farm these items back in original Cataclysm vanilla uh, re-release on, Catac on our, uh, classic servers right now, you're shit out of luck. It's already gone. That ship has sailed. So uh, I'm trying to collect a lot of items. And one thing I've noticed is that the, um, the Scarlet Monastery items, a lot of them, which are now rare, uh, are worth very little on the auction house so i've managed to pick up a lot of those for pretty dirt cheap that being said from what i know i still need to do more research um i spent like hours last night digging into this whole like oldemon nomergon thing because when i realized the whole patch 2.3 changes i was like fascinated by that misconception and then i tried to get like as much information on I as i could on those actual changes specifically to those dungeons so I still need to look into some of the other ones. Um, but I believe, I could be wrong, I believe Scarlet Monastery didn't actually receive major changes until Missa Pandaria? Because that's when they added, um, if I go to, uh, yeah, Missa Pandaria, yeah, we get Scarlet Monastery and Scarlet Halls. So that's when they revamped, um, uh, Scarlet. I, I I forget the words. Um. Yeah, it's uh. Oh yeah, because it used to be now. Now the dungeons are Scarlet Monastery and Scarlet Halls. It used to be the whole instance was Scarlet Monastery, and then the final version was Cathedral. That's what I I was getting confused on. I was wondering why, because then I was like, wait, was it originally called Scarlet Monastery Monastery? But then it was like, no, it was Monastery Cathedral. I'm just, I'm getting stuck in my own thoughts. Um, Moss High Tagged. Okay, I need to do this quest. Uh, I don't hand these in just yet, I don't believe. Uh, I always get that confused. But, yeah, see, this is the part for Lokmodon where I would really love to have flying. So I think ideally I probably would have done, maybe I should have done a bit more in Shadowman Valley, just so I had flying by the time I got to this section. Eh. It is a testing run after all. I'm gonna tag that guy. Oh fuck. Oh, I got the mounts off. I don't know how my cast did not get interrupted. That's actually kind of wild. Um, yeah, so Scarlet Monastery didn't get changed, so I'm not sure which items would be the best to farm. Is it? I actually do think all of the major dungeon changes that occurred were actually in in 2.3. Obviously, with some exceptions like the Vicar's Robe, uh, like I said before. But I think a lot of the items that I found were actually, yeah, were, were already 
have already become super rare, except Scarlet Monastery. But once again, that's that technically doesn't really count because it is not active yet. Uh, now I want to talk to, yeah, that guy in the the house. Hmm. Now I'm I'm. Oh wait, I talked to you. Right, and then I don't hand in the other quest until later. Uh, am I forgetting any? Let's see, I have... Which of the Lachmodon... What am I missing? Hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why? I, I'm, I'm very confused for a second. Either my quest tracker is bugged, or I just got really majorly shafted. No, I used... I interacted with the, um... Yeah, the interactable item over there. Why are the... Why are those quests not appearing? Uh, I'm... I'm supposed to have multiple quests to hand in to that guy in Thelsimer. And they're just not showing up. And I really hope that I didn't just get, like, majorly screwed over and it just... Because I didn't hand in those quests. I definitely did not hand them in. Because you hand them in at the bottom of Thelsimer. I've never encountered this bug before. I'm hoping it's just a display bug, and then if I go back there, I will actually be able to to hand in the stuff, because that's going to really suck if I just lose, like, three quests worth of experience for absolutely no reason other than the game decided to shaft me. I'm going to be very, very, very upset. Eh, whatever. We'll just hope it's a visual bug. Um... But yeah, I, I, I'm curious about what I should spend my time farming. Yeah, these are the Stolen Explorers League documents. This is what I'm wondering, wondering about. But I have this quest now. Document 3 of 6. Torn square jaw. Oh, wait, there's a rare mob up. Shanda the Spinner. I just realized something. That quest mob in, in Loch Madan, was it always there? And didn't I... Did they change? Hold up. Did they make actual changes to quest mob locations in the 10.1.5 PTR? Huh. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, because there was a point earlier in the run where I walked into a house to hand in a quest, and I was like, wait, that's weird. The quest NPC is supposed to be here, but it's outside the house? When did that change? And I just talked to that guy outside of his house in Thelsimer, and I didn't really think much of it at the time, but then I realized that all my quests were gone immediately after. So I think what happened is they moved the quest NPCs out from inside the houses in Thelsimer to the outside. So what happened when I talked to that guy outside of his house is he was actually the NPC that I hand in the Explorer's League documents to, and his position has been moved. What? But why? I mean, that actually is a time save. That's the funny thing. It's like, it's a, it's a minuscule time save. It's like a 30 second time save. If that. Very, very small. It's a nice change, but it's not in the patch notes anywhere. They just randomly decided that they were going to make the NPC locations in Lock Modan slightly more convenient. I am so confused right now. <laughs> um, sure, I guess. I, I, it wasn't necessary, but like, hey, uh, alliance stonks. Honestly, I mean, if we're just randomly getting getting alliance buffs, fuck. 
Does that mean that they're just like actually making small quality of life changes to my leveling route? That's it's actually kind of cool. I wonder if there's any. What are there other things? Shit. Wait, if that means that Blizzard's actually following my leveling route, because no shot, right? Like of all the random ass bullshit that gets changed in this patch that's undocumented, the positioning of Lockmodan NPCs is slightly more convenient. I mean, it it is entirely possible that some Blizzard dev just so happened to be questing through Lockmodan and thought, huh, let me move these NPCs independent of my route, which has heavily used Lockmodan for three years now. Um, it's possible, but I'm just saying, like, you know, if we're getting nice quality of life changes, uh, can we fix? Oh, there's another rare. Maybe the rares are just starting to spawn right now. And that's why I found some of them, but not all of them. I should just, yeah, Shadow of Death that. Um, yeah, let's get, okay, so on, let, let's pretend that there is a Blizzard dev watching this, secretly making, uh, secretly nerfing my 411 trinkets and nerfing the Onyx Annulet and then buffing my questing route. But let's assume that's the case, right? Um, more than anything, can you please get the uh, get the heirloom shit fixed so that I don't get messages from viewers every single day asking me why they can't enchant their heirlooms? By the way, I don't have a problem with you guys messaging me, but I do feel bad when it's like every other day I get a message from somebody confused about heirloom enchants. I've gotten so many recently and I just feel really bad because they like they come to me looking for an answer because they figure oh well I'm probably doing something wrong let me ask Carlton maybe he knows and then I have to be the one to tell them yeah sorry it's just broken and it has been broken for six months and Blizzard has been made aware of it and nothing has happened and you just can't enchant your heirlooms sorry like it just sucks I have to be the bearer of bad news for that. So, um, can we get that fixed? That would be great. Um, also, what else? Uh, okay, there's party sync bugs. So, whenever you party sync in certain cataclysm zones that have, like, NPC companions, the game just kind of breaks. Uh, what's a good example? Let me first spend my talent points. Uh, I want to go Mind Spike, Mind Melt, Mind's Eye. And I want to take... Oh. There is a talent on Wowhead that is not actually in-game. Good job, Wowhead. Uh, okay. I guess Void Volley. I cast both of those abilities a decent amount. Um, yeah, so Cataclysm NPCs have a pretty annoying bug with Party Sync, where a lot of times if you um, are in a group with, like, or not in a group, but, like, if you're in a quest with the, like, Agatha, the follower in Silver Pine Forest, uh, Party Sync routinely breaks if you're trying to replay the questline for a second time, and Agatha just won't spawn. It just doesn't appear. The same thing happens in Hillsbred Foothills. When you are trying to do the, what's it called? Uh, the quests in the sludge fields, and you have like Johnny Awesome and the other undead guy. When you have to escort them around and kill those mobs, they just refuse to appear and follow you. And it basically bricks the quest. You can't continue. Specifically on Party Sync, this is an issue. And it has made Party Sync basically unusable for a while outside of things like the WAD intro, just because a lot of Cataclysm quests, specifically on the Horde side, like Alliance don't really have any that do this, so it doesn't really affect them. But Horde has a lot of quests where you get NPC followers, and all of them just get super broken whenever Party Sync is enabled. So, yeah, if we can get a fix for that. Uh, what else while I'm at it? Uh, I don't know. I can't, nothing comes to mind immediately. Uh, oh, what is this? Mind Spike Insanity. Ooh. That's fancy. Can do those quests later. I'll just turn in this one first, see what it gives me. Um. Hmm.
I mean, could we get changes to the drop rates for Oldemon and stuff? Like, I know a lot of people who would love to farm that transmog, and they really can't because it's, like, so prohibitive. Yeah, I don't know. I'm out of... I'm out of cool Blizzard suggestions. I have a lot of cool suggestions for Cataclysm Classic, but I would imagine that's probably a bit too much to ask, right? But there's so many things, like, I think Cataclysm is such a good opportunity for Blizzard to just, like, open the floodgates. Like I said before in my last speedrun that I'm actually probably, like, one of the few people, maybe not one of the few people, I, th I think there's a decent amount of people like me who are also really excited for Cataclysm Classic, but it's, like, so many of my friends, whenever I say that I'm actually really excited for it, they just, like, they just give me this, like, weird look, or they just, like, hum me in, in Discord or something like that. And um, I don't know. I just I think it's going to be really fun. And I mostly think it's fun because they've had to play like somewhat conservatively in Wrath Classic. And you every single time that I make a video on like the Titan Rune Dungeons, which I really like. I love the Titan Rune Dungeons. But you always get these classic Andes in the comments who are like, oh, look at Blizzard bringing more retail stuff to classic. Uh -huh. I want my classic to be pure, please. It's like, fuck off. The dungeons are actually really cool. It's like, who fucking gives a shit if there's new content that you don't need to interact with if you don't want to? It's like, nobody's forcing you to. It's just cool catch-up shit. Right. But the dungeons are also sick as hell. Like there's really cool affixes and stuff. And I think I kind of assumed that we weren't going to get any like classic plus content until Cataclassic at the very like least. And I thought even then maybe they would be too like worried about changing things up. But at this point, right, even in Wrath, which I think everyone expected them to stay faithful to, they haven't. And if I'm being honest, I think that was kind of a mistake. Like, as much as I really like Titan Rune Dungeons, and I'm really glad that Blizzard did make them, I can understand why some people are upset, but more so I can understand why people are upset about the fucking WoW token. Like, yeah, the WoW token is... It's the fucking WoW token, so, you know. Um, I do think that it is a little bit of a slap in the face to classic players to basically be like, yeah, I know we promised you, like, a faithful recreation of the older version of the game, but also money. You know, I, I get it. I get that they need to make money. I get that botting is hard to combat. I'm actually, I, I am on, I, I wouldn't say I'm on the side of Blizzard, but I am a little, I'm slightly more sympathetic to the fact that botting is not nearly as easy to combat as a lot of classic players seem to think it is. A lot of them are like, herder, just ban the bots, right? And it, it should be obvious that it is not that simple. Um... You know, it, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to figure out that, you know, if somebody is making a shit ton of money and all they need to do is pay $15 to get a new count and start botting again, they're just going to keep doing that, right? And it's kind of an impossible problem to solve. Oh, nice. We got another rare. So it, it, it's not the worst showing I've ever seen in terms of rare mobs. Um, but yeah, like, I, I get it. It's, it's fucking tough. Oh, that is... That is a cool talent. I like that. At the same time, though, I do think it's like I would be 100% on Blizzard's side if they actually did make an effort to really ban the bots. Like, I, I, I'm I, fine with them saying that banning the bots is a hopeless battle and they're not even going to try to fight it. Like, I would be like, yeah, you know, uh, kind of shitty. Like, that is kind of your job, but like, I get it. But... The thing that I dislike is they tried to have their cake and eat it too. They they tried to be like, man, fighting bots is a hopeless battle, but we're trying so hard. And it's like, no, you're fucking not, right? Like every single person who plays World of Warcraft knows that Blizzard is not trying that hard to ban bots. Like when you can basically see active bots no matter where you go, right? you're not trying that hard to ban bots, right? Like, let's let's be real here. When you can slash who is own and immediately see a million bots, if a player can do that, so can Blizzard. You're not trying that hard. Don't make excuses. Like, I, I get it. It's, it's difficult, but just fucking admit that instead of trying to do, like, the performative bullshit. That's the stuff that annoys me. Like, just admit that it's for money is kind of where I'm at. And, and I would be like, I get it, Blizzard Blizzard fucking sucks, we all know that. Um, but 
yeah, it, I don't know. It just annoys me how Blizzard tries to act like they're the good guys. And it's like, no, no, you, you're very squarely in your villain arc right now. Nobody is being deceived by this shit. Like, just, just fucking own it. You know, it's more honest that way. <sighs> but... Um, I don't know. I, I am at least the one plus side of all of these changes to classic is I was initially concerned that they were going to still be a little bit conservative to cataclysm. And the one thing that you can't do if you want cataclysm to succeed is you can't be conservative with it because yes, you're going to have people like me who are just going to play cataclysm classic, no matter what I would play it, even if it was just a straight re-release of the original, but a lot of people have a really bad stigma with Cataclysm, you're gonna have to, you know, sweeten the pot a little bit if you really want to get people to actually come back and try it out. So I think having some Classic Plus content would really, really, really go a long way. And I think at this point, that's a no-brainer, right? Because they're already adding hard mode dungeons to Wrath. Well, then obviously they're gonna port that over. The only thing is, while I like Titan Rune dungeons in theory, they're the kind of thing that I think looks better on paper than it actually really works in practice. As the problem with Titan Rune Dungeons is when you have affixes that are just, like, really fucking bad, it just means that nobody runs those dungeons, and that causes an issue. It's just the disparity between some of the dungeons and some of the other ones is just so massive. Like, for instance, if you haven't played Classic, which I'd imagine is a majority of the people watching this, right? Um, there are, there are these like affixes that Blizzard has added to classic dungeons. And, uh, if you're really curious, I have a whole guide for it, but I'd imagine most of you are just like, either you don't give a shit or you're like mildly curious, like, oh, I'm, I just have this on my second monitor and I'm going to listen to Harald and ramble about classic stuff because I'm bored. Um, but they have like special affixes for every single dungeon or sets of dungeons, so Astral Nerub and Onkhet the Old Kingdom both have uh, both share an affix, and then Violet Holds, uh, Nexus, and the Oculus also share an affix, but they're two separate affixes. So the one for Violet Hold and the Nexus is Mirror Images, and it's basically in combat mobs will summon Mirror Images that have different effects. So one of them will cast Arcane Missiles on a random player, uh, the other one will spam cast Holy Nova, basically like I did during the early dungeons. Um, except that one does a lot less damage than the actual Holy Priest version. And then one of them will just fixate random players and try to punch them and interrupt spell casting and stuff like that. Which is apparently something I actually forgot to mention in my guide. Whoops. Uh, I didn't even know that they interrupted spell casting. And then somebody was like, hey, just so you know, uh, yeah, they do. And it makes it really annoying as a healer. And I didn't realize because they die in one hit. So whenever I tank dungeons, I just hard swap to them and just insta like uh judgment it or oh we got lord condar nice there's another rear but yeah i always judgment it or i just hand of reckoning it and then it just immediately dies so it's never been an issue for me nice but i can understand how if you have dps that just aren't even trying to do the mechanics then it might be a bit of a pain so uh yeah apparently i kind of overlooked that slightly Let's see, what do I need? I need two more bobcats. Uh, I can get one here, and let's just round this up from here. Oh, nice, that one jumped to me. That actually makes it a little bit easier. That one, oh, perfect, it also jumped. I can do Mind Blast, and we'll just finish him off with a Holy Nova. That ram positioning is kind of awkward. Okay, there we go, Shadow or Death. And I'll turn in these quests, and then I will have one more in the cave. Um, but yeah, all that to say, right, uh, the way that the affixes work currently, I would say, like, the best one by far is the one actually present in Halls of Stone and Halls of Lightning. And I actually used to hate Halls of, uh, Halls of Stone, because Halls of Stone was just a massive slog. It was such a pain. Um, the old version of the affix absolutely sucked. It took forever. And they reworked it. And now the new version of the Halls of Stone and Halls of Lightning affix, it's really fucking cool. It's while you're in combat with mobs, you gain a stacking buff that increases your damage, and it caps out at 100 stacks. But when you reach 100 stacks, 
you gain miniature versions of all of the Titan Keeper buffs from the yogg Saron encounter. So you get like all these damage buffs, all these health buffs, a healing received. Uh, the healer basically gets like infinite mana regen, and uh, you get like stuff that interacts with like the yogg Saron sanity mechanics. Well, why does that matter in Halls of Lightning and Halls of Stone? Well, it's because... In the new version of the Affix, they've added yogg Saron Crusher Tentacles that just spawn randomly throughout the dungeon. So even though you get these extremely overpowered buffs, they're not just like, it doesn't let you steamroll the dungeon. Because you actually need to then use these overpowered buffs to defeat these new yogg Saron Tentacle mobs that are added there on top of the existing guys. And it's... In the end, the buffs are really overpowered. If you know what you're doing, it is actually really broken. It is the easiest one by far. But I at least like it because it feels fun. Like, you get to do a shit ton of damage. You get to constantly chain pull because the healer never has to stop and drink. So it feels like you're literally playing a retail dungeon. It's great. But also, it just gives you an added challenge. So it's the perfect way to design an affix because it's... It's not just a punishment. It doesn't just give you something that you need to play around. It makes you feel super powerful. And then in addition to making you feel super powerful, it gives you like an extra challenge on top of the existing dungeon, which is fantastic. Like that is how you design a good affix. Oh shit, my... When did that fall off? I hope I haven't been sitting here not using the um, experience potion for too long. That would have been awkward if I'm just yammering away. Um, I need to. I'm just gonna round all these guys up because I gotta kill them anyway. Yeah, Shadow Priest birthday we kind of fucking owns actually. Let me let me buff up because so I know I need to eat Bear Tartar, and I can swap to Unbridled Fury even though I'm barely using these potions, right? Mm -hmm. Bear Tartar is good. Can use that. Can use that in place of that elixir. That, 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 and put Bear Tartar. Yeah, I also didn't really make great use of gun shoes earlier in the zone. I should have been using them in place of slow flying at certain points. At this point, it's not worth it, but hey, is what it is. Um, but yeah, so all that to say, whenever Halls of Stone or Halls of Lightning are the daily heroic, I'm all over that shit. Because, you know, I always try to do the daily heroic, but I'm not going to lie, today I skipped it. You know, I was naughty. I, I was just, it, I, I just, I logged into Classic this morning. And, or, well, I mean, I say this morning, but it's in a weird limbo where, like, after my raid ended at midnight, and then I logged into Classic, um, I was like, I should probably do, oh, whoa, Ashtail spawn. This has to have spawned, like, right now, because I could have sworn I checked before and I did not see Ashtail anywhere, unless I, I just have really bad eyes, but I think the rares are literally spawning on top of me, which means I should probably go back to the earlier part of the zone once I return to Thelsimer and check for all of those rares, because there's a good chance that some of them might just be cropping up now. And it helps that I have fast flying, so. Uh, two points. Uh, and what I want to put this in. Uh, Ancient Madness and Phantasmal whatever. Turn this quest in. Uh, what was I saying, though? I'll check for chests sometimes. They're up. Is the, uh, yeah, Geoshaper Marin. Yeah, so now I'm finding all the rares. I think I got here just before all of the rares were set to spawn. Because they have, like, fairly consistent spawn times. Wow. That shit just died. Okie doke. Um, but yeah, so whenever Halls of Stone or Halls of Lightning is up, I want to do it. Because, like, some days I wish I could do Halls of Stone and Halls of Lightning, but it's like, I have to choose between either getting my daily heroic done or just doing Halls of Stone and Halls of Lightning, and I only really have time for one. So I choose daily heroic because it's bonus rewards. But if it's Halls of Stone and Halls of Lightning, then two birds, one stone. 
I get to do the most fun out of all of the classic uh, Wrath dungeons, and I get to get bonus rewards. But then on, on the flip side, whenever it's Asjul Narub and Onkhet the Old Kingdom, I want to die. Because that affix is sometimes uh, a random party member in your group will get web wrapped, and you need to break them out. And it happens insanely frequently, and there's no cast time. So it's not like a web wrap where sometimes the mobs will cast it, or it's not a web wrap where you get a debuff, and then it says, after five seconds, you'll be wrapped. No, you instantly get thrown into a web wrap. Zero counterplay. You just get stunned. Other players need to break you out. And then this uh, phase of Wrath Classic, Blizzard buffed it. So now, in addition to wrapping you, you just die if it doesn't get broken in time. It's just so ridiculously punishing for absolutely no reason at all. It It is just the peak of misery in terms of game design. I Oh, there's another rare. Nice. Um, I, I just really don't know who thought that was ever going to be a good idea to design the mechanic like that. It, it just shits all over the player. So... The problem that I have with the design of the classic affixes now is, you know, I don't know, Onket the Old Kingdom, it's not my favorite dungeon in the world. It's not like a terrible dungeon, though, but it's also, yeah, it's not great, right? It's it's an okay dungeon. But when you take an already, like, meh dungeon and give it a terrible, like, effect, it just makes it so nobody wants to run it. And, you know, there are dungeons this season that I really don't want to run. Like, I kind of hate running Ultimon. I've talked about that a few times before. Um, just because I, I've i been in so many groups where people just don't know the mechanics. Um, and Brackenhide Hollow is obviously miserable. But, like, imagine if Brackenhide Hollow, on top of just, like, normally being miserable... Like, Brackenhide Hollow just is the way it is. And then there was an affix that only existed in Brackenhide Hollow... That was like, by the way, sometimes your tank just gets stunned. And um, sometimes your healer and your tank will get stunned. And then if you don't uh, switch to your tank and deal a certain amount of damage to them within 10 seconds of them being stunned, they die. Uh, but sometimes all four party members except one DPS will get stunned. And then that singular DPS, while tanking all of the mobs, needs to break every single player in the group out before all of them die, right? Like, imagine if that affix was only present in Brackenhide Hollow. Um, that's what it's like to do some of the dungeons in Wrath Classic right now. And I'll give you a hint. The end result is that people just don't do those dungeons. Uh, it's it's rare. Or they try to do it, and then they wipe like five times to the second boss, and then just give up. And, man, I've... I was in, I'm still tilted, like, you know it was a bad dungeon pug when I'm tilted, like, over a week later, but I did a pug astral in the rub with this new affix, and I was the top damage by about 3,000 damage, mind you, um, good damage in, a. Uh, in Wrath Classic is considered to be like around 4k, give or take, 4 or 5k. These people were undergeared, so, you know, I would say if they were doing 3k damage, that would be respectable. So I was doing about 4k damage. Uh, problem with that is, one, I'm a prop paladin. Two, like I said, I was 3k damage ahead of number two. And, you know, with math, that means they were all doing 1k DPS. In a Wrath Classic dungeon. That's really bad. Um, they were also not switching to webs at all. And because of the way that the mechanic has changed, you can now no longer solo break your web wraps by dropping Consecration as a Paladin and standing in it. It doesn't do enough damage. You need somebody to hard swap. So I'm trying to carry the damage. The healer also was like, I don't even know what they were doing. So I was having to basically spot heal people with flash heal. And mind you, this is not during the era where Protection Paladin has really good off-healing. Yeah, see, that rare is up. They all just spawned right after I went through it. Huh. Um, but yeah, so this is not during the Protection Paladin has insane off-healing era. No, I, I don't have great healing. I am having to hard cast Flash of Light on random people. I'm having to use Divine Sacrifice on cooldown, dropping Lay of Hands and Blessing of Sack on people. It is a fucking nightmare. 
right? And um, okay, that's an upgrade. Uh, uh, I should also, yeah, I should be checking this. I actually got quite a lot of BOEs. Um, did I get any bracers or belts? I just want to make sure I check this. I got a belt. That is a big, 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 big upgrade. And those are bracers. Okay, that's at least an upgrade. Um, yeah, so I'm having to do all of that. And then meanwhile, whenever I get web wrapped, nobody swaps to it. So I'm just sitting there. I'm trying to carry the damage. I'm trying to carry the healing. I'm also trying to tank and survive, right? And hold threat. And then I get web wrapped and everybody's taking a million damage and they're just tunneling the boss instead of breaking me out. And we had like five wipes to a new Barak. And every single time I would say in party chat, guys, please, if you want to do this dungeon, you need to kill the web wraps. They don't just die on their own. If they expire without being broken, I will die. And then we will wipe again. So please, for the love of God, I don't care how much damage you do. I don't care if you do 500 DPS. Just make sure that my web wrap gets broken. And on attempt number five, the hunter did nothing but break my web wrap and he did no other damage. And you know what? I didn't even care because at least I wasn't dying constantly due to things completely out of my control. And oh man, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really know how they change it. I honestly think what you could probably do for classic dungeons and have it be enough is just add a seasonal affix, right? Um... Just add, and, and the nice thing is, it won't even be completely gone, right? So, with the way that the Titan Rune Dungeons currently work, is the old one still exists. So the old version of every affix still exists in the game, and you can access it. It drops lower item level loot, though, but it's obviously still tuned to be slightly easier. So I think that would be the perfect solution. Instead of having, like, individual versions of each affix for every dungeon, and yeah, Look here, this guy's normally down inside of that building, and now he's out here for some reason. This is completely new to this patch. Undocumented change. He's supposed to be right here, and he's just not. Uh, that definitely had me very confused earlier, though. I was really not sure why um, that thing was just not working for me. Uh, but yeah, cool. Um... Do I do now? First off, I refresh that, and then I Dalharth or uh, Garrison. Oh, wait, 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 almost, almost forgot, almost forgot, almost forgot. Uh, check rare mobs. Yeah, because they should have all respawned, so I should be able to find a bunch of really, really easy rare mobs. And actually, while I'm at it, before I get this, pro I, I assume this is worth it. Obviously, this is still non-optimal RNG because if I had been lucky. I would have just found them the first try. Why is this not working, man? What the fuck is wrong with this buff? I'm just going to get six minutes on it. There we go. Six minutes, that's all I need. That... Why? Uh, I should just shut up sometimes. Um... uh words um okay so what i was saying before yeah i think if you it would honestly make blizzard's life easier not having to decide design like right now we have like what eight affixes nice magosh uh there's like eight affixes in wrath classic so every single time there's a new season blizzard's gonna have to kind of reinvent the wheel slightly for eight different affixes and then in icc they're gonna have to add Presumably a new one that covers all three ICC dungeons. Uh, that's like a decent amount of work. And honestly, I think it's really wasted because like, I don't know, some of the affixes are good. But I think if right now every single dungeon were to have the affix from Halls of Stone and Halls of Lightning, people would be having way more fun Heroic Plus Plus dungeons. Like everybody would be loving it. It would be, you know, just universally praised by people. But instead, it's like there's two dungeons with really good affixes, and then two with really doo-doo affixes. So, I don't know. Uh, I just think an easier solution would be just make one really cool seasonal affix, slap that onto every single Cataclysm Classic dungeon, 
bam, voila, uh, you have yourself a uh, hard mode. That's all you really need. As long as that individual affix, the one that you picked, is enjoyable, that's all that really matters. But I just hope they don't go with the realm of, like, Direct Mythic Plus, because maybe I'm in the minority here, uh, but I I really don't like M+. Plus. You know, it, it's I think it's cool in concept, and I like the idea of scaling things, but the way that it's implemented, I have just kind of always hated, and I just feel like it has gotten worse and worse and worse over the years, with some of the affixes just being absolutely horseshit. And a lot of times, like, I will, I'll not do M plus for the entire week. And then one of my friends will message me on Discord and they'll be like, hey, do you want to help me with a plus 20 underrot? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. Why not? Plus 20 underrot. That's easy, right? And then it's just the absolute worst, most dog shit affixes ever known to man. And I just, I want to die. And the, the fact that your experience with the exact same dungeon can be just so wildly different based on affixes sucks. And it's not the good kind of wildly different. It's not the the whole like, oh, it's no playthrough is ever the same twice. It's not like that kind of each playthrough is different. It's the bad kind of sometimes you have fun and then sometimes you don't. And that's what it's like to do uh, shit in, um, what's it called? Uh, Mythic Plus. That's what it's like to do Mythic Plus half the time. It's just, okay, am I having fun this week? No? All right, I guess I will do one key to potentially get a pair of 447 Vile Stain Krog Tusks, and if I don't get that, I don't do any more for the entire week, because fuck that. And that has been just about my experience with uh, Mythic Plus this season. So, yeah. Uh, also, I am going to get to do a decent amount of gore ground, it looks like. Um, what I'm doing here, though, is I figure... Since, you know, it's Alliance, and since I'm not, like, super close, I'll go the traditional route of cutting through Talador and doing all of the efficient Talador stuff, and then kind of, like, snaking my way up towards Gorgrond. Um, shit, I'm not stuck in combat with those. I'm gonna wait for this to drop combat, and then I'm gonna try to spend the, the rest of my talent points. Uh... Uh, yeah, definitely 20 minutes to get 12 levels is not doable. But I think as a proof of concept with slightly better routing choices and Darkmoon Fair buff, I could definitely beat my previous world record. I might even, with a more optimized version of this, right, where I'm not like second guessing my, my choices all the time, uh, I could probably get sub three hours. Sub three hours is like a pipe dream, but actually, technically, it's we need 13 levels because it goes up to 61 now. And I did say in my last video that I would be doing, um, whatchamacallit, that I would be doing this up to 61 because that is actually the cap now. Uh, let's do this. And what I want to spend my points on no more backlash and void shield, probably. Uh, power infusion. Guess I'm doing mind spike. Do I cast void bolt here? Yeah, now I'm starting to not really fully understand my single target rotation. I mean, I, I didn't do that much studying that I fully remember what I'm supposed to be doing for pure single target. Um, do that. It still died reasonably fast, though, but I definitely could have gotten it down faster. That. I think actually Gorgon should be decently fast, I hope. I don't know. It's hard to say, like, at this point, I, I've kind of cut Gorgrond out of so many of my runs because a lot of them have been Horde. But Gorgrond is still pretty good. We shall see how that pans out. 
I'm just tabbed out real quick because I'm checking a message. Huh. Oh, it looks like the, um... It looks like the final boss of... Or not, well, not just the final boss, but it looks like basically the new Mega Dungeon uh, right now in... Pick Rin Artillery Tower, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it looks like the new Mega Dungeon, Dawn of the Infinite. Blizzard just randomly decided to, like, buff every single boss into the stratosphere for no reason. And it definitely needed a buff because it was way too easy in the um, version that I tested it. As you can see, if you watch that, I have the uh, the footage posted, right? But I think buffing the boss to... My friend sent a screenshot. Uh... It took some group 11 minutes to kill the final boss. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I really think they missed the mark with that. I was thinking about testing it this weekend, but if it's that far off, there is absolutely no chance that Blizzard releases a boss um, or a dungeon where there's bosses in, in five-man content that are 11 minutes long. And, like, I've already done the boss fights, and I can tell you... They're not that engaging. Like, if we're having, like, Sylvanas-length bosses for stuff that has, like, bare-bones mechanics, uh, yeah, there's no chance. And it seems like, for whatever reason, Blizzard's, like, on this warpath or something of we're gonna make, make it so, like, five-man content is more difficult. But, like, I don't know. I've seen people saying... Nice. Um... I've seen people saying that, like, the Mega Dungeon changes are good because people want more difficult five-man content. And, like, yeah, but there's a limit, right? Like, if, like, Hall of Fame Mythic Raiders are struggling with it, and, like I said, I've done the fights, they're not really anything special mechanically. From what I've heard, it's just numbers tuning. That's not fun. Because we have just have Mythic Plus for that, right? Like, let the Mythic Zero Dungeons be hard mechanically, and then make it so if you're undergeared, it's a challenge, and then add achievements like they even have, like they have an immortality achievement for do the entire dungeon without dying. That's a challenge in and of itself. You don't need to make the dungeon so ridiculously overtuned that people take 11 minutes to kill one boss to make it interesting. That's just, um, that's what we call not fun. Uh, because, yeah, nobody likes just wailing at a boss for 11 minutes at a time. That 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 is just lame. What the fuck is going on with my talents here? Can it can it go? Jesus. Uh, man, I, I don't even know where to put my buttons now. Fucking hell. Uh, I'm going to put this on whatever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I... I I have too many buttons as a Shadow Priest now. Is it supposed to be like this, or have I just taken, like, an excessive amount of active abilities? Somebody will have to tell me down in the comments. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people critiquing my Shadow Priest play, considering Shadow Priest has been, like, one of the most requested runs in a while. Uh, there's a lot of, like, diehard Shadow Priest players, and I know a lot of them took offense to when I said that, you know, it was the worst leveling spec in the game, which quite honestly, I think back in Shadowlands um, was true. And before, like, Shadow Priest, there was a long period of time where it wasn't necessarily the worst leveling spec in the game, but it was, like I said, it was kind of in a position of, why would you play Shadow Priest when Holy Priest was just so fucking good? You know? Like, there was just no advantage to playing Shadow. I can do, I think. Oh, fuck. Uh, I should probably use mind games here. So many of these active abilities that I'm just going to keep forgetting to use. But I can do this, then double shadow or death. Nice. Okay, now I just need to kill one more Saberon and free three jungle axe beaks. I can get both of the ones I need to free here. Nice. Oh, that's only two. Uh, wait, has... Yeah, one respawned over there, so I can grab that, and the mobs aren't back yet. 
All right. Oh, wow. That gives a lot of experience at this level. Um, yeah. I guess at this point, the question is, can I beat my run from yesterday? Uh, I don't know. I have, what, 23 minutes-ish? 22 minutes to beat my run from yesterday? So... Not impossible? It'll definitely be tough. But the last 10 levels are ridiculously fast. And certain parts of Gorgrond are like... Just absolutely crazy. So we'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to focus now though on going at least somewhat fast. Like I said, kind of tired. I want to get this done, but also if I am gonna beat that time, it's good practice though. I've been getting quite a few pretty solid runs because obviously, like the times on these are really 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 fast, just because you know fifty percent XP buff, but. This is the type of run that if I were to do it like a while ago, I probably would have taken like an extra two hours on it. So I'm definitely getting better at running classes that I'm not used to. Because I'm, I'm getting close to my Windwalker run, right? And overall, this was arguably... Uh, I might have had slightly more ideal conditions compared to my Windwalker run, but I did a lot of stuff really inefficiently, and, you know, I did the whole PTR shenanigans. So that definitely lost me a little bit of time. Oh, well, that's nice. It keeps fearing him so he can't do anything in return. Ooh. Okay, yeah, Shadow or Death damage no longer really hurts much. That talent that reduces the damage taken by 75%, like, that is a complete game changer. Because it was nearly killing me in some of those earlier dungeons, but this is just actually not an issue at all. Uh, do I want to do Forgotten Caves? Mm, nah, I kind of hate that one. That bonus objective really fucking sucks. Um, I forget, is Miscreet Mire you need to unlock, I believe. Oh no, Miscreet Mire is just one of the default ones. Okay. So I'll do this then. Mind Blast, Mind Blast, Mind Spike. Yeah, the, the rotation is honestly coming along. Let me let me try to do this. I think if I do Void Eruption... I mean, this is mostly single target damage anyway, because these eggs just die in like one hit. So I'm either doing two target cleave, or I'm just going to single target one down at a time. So I might as well just... Use that. And I'm guessing Void Bolt is single target, and then extends the duration of my dots. Okay. Yeah, I looked into... I tried to find, like, a rotation guide on Wowhead before starting this, and I'm gonna be honest, the Shadow Priest Wowhead guide doesn't really seem that great. Uh, I'm sorry if, like, anyone knows the Shadow Priest guide writer, but as somebody who has read... A lot of class guides and been able to kind of understand what was going on. The main issue that I had was like the rotation thing. I, I had to, there was like a bunch of different things that I had to check off to signify like what part of the rotation I wanted. And basically the initial rotation just had giant gaps in it. So it's obviously clear that a lot of the abilities that, you know, 
are part of the main rotation are kind of like core talents. So sure, I suppose you could have people manually select which talents there are, but I would figure that you would want to make it so instead of having people check off every single talent, what you could probably do is what a lot of other guides do, at least I think so, I, I'm pretty sure I've read guides like that, where they assume ahead of time that you're running certain talents. So it'll um, it'll have like a handful of options already pre-selected. And then you can go ahead and uncheck those options if you are not running those talents for whatever reason. But it was so hard to get a an idea of what the actual rotation was because I had to go in and like, okay, find the correct talent build and then check, like, cross-reference which abilities is it actually running in this recommended talent build and select all of those by hand and then try to follow like the 20 step rotation for it which there were a few that were like repeated um like i forget which one it was i think there was one ability that it like told you to use two times i think it was like shadow crash there were two times within the rotation where it was like use shadow crash here and I, I don't know. It just, it seems like it was kind of done really automated. Like he just kind of wrote an explanation for how to use every single ability. And then instead of trying to make like an actual rotation guide, just basically made like a select um, which abilities you have. And then he just kind of drag and drop them into the order that you generally want to use each ability, which as somebody who was trying to learn the spec from nothing, basically told me absolutely nothing about it i just i kind of went in knowing understanding basically nothing of what i had read on wowhead and just saying all right uh, i guess i'm going to just figure this out as i go and also as we've already established the leveling guide section of the wowhead thing is completed utter fucking trash uh it completely missed the holy nova combo which has been absolutely carrying my leveling thus far and i'm Unconvinced that that is not as powerful as I seem to think it is. Uh, when you can just spam one button and kite, there's no way that that is not like a meta strategy. Like, even right now, it's doing as much damage as Void Eruption. There's no way that Holy Nova spam isn't the way to go. Uh, but also, I I mean, I can't really fault the guide for that per se because I would say the vast majority of Wowhead guides, um just have really lazy generic copy pasted like uh what should you do for leveling sec sections and i i mean i would imagine that you have to put that in there as a wowhead guide writer but in fairness there's not a lot to say about some classes but i, I do think that right like i i could probably already give you more commentary about what it's like to level as a shadow priest than the wowhead guide does even if it's not like as um, from like a high end level, I could probably give somebody a general overview of a brand new beginner. Like, what does it feel like to level as a shadow priest just by my own experience thus far? And I've already talked about a lot of that stuff, like the Holy Nova, like the turdy playstyle versus kiting and stuff, and the survivability, um, and things like that. And also, you'll notice I'm taking a lot of like burst related stuff. Like the reason I'm taking Shadow Crash and um, void eruption and whatnot is because the way that a lot of leveling works is you do big pulls and then you try to nuke down those big pulls. So even if I have like a lot of dead time in between pulls, as long as I'm able to pull like five plus mobs and do shadow crash, void eruption, holy nova, and then just like single target down the rest, uh, that's really all that I need. It, it it does most of the work for me. Uh, let's see, I can get new. Uh, consumables after this I realized I, I have a new set I can use my Shadowland stuff uh, where is it here and then I use Shadow Core oil and then drag Phantom Fire there, Deathly Ferocity there uh, what am I missing we have you my new Augment Rune Right, okay, we got the new augment room. Um, but I mean, uh, I should say some of the Wowhead guides do it well. Like, obviously, 
um, Babylonius, Windwalker guide writer and um, my guild leader. Um, well, I've talked to him a lot about Windwalker monk leveling. And also, I just know him uh, personally as being somebody who actually does go the extra mile to put in like the added little detail. Like in his Windwalker monk guide, it is it is cursory, right? Which I think is the idea of Wowhead. He's not going into like a 20 minute long guide like I did for my um, monk leveling overview. But he still mentions a lot of the key points about, like, important things to take, like uh, the war mode talents and how um, the the Fist of Fury one makes you parry damage and makes you, like, really tanky as a result. He mentions Afterlife, which is when mobs die, they leave behind Chi Orbs, which means that Windwalker can, like, chain pulls because they get, like, really good resources after a kill, which isn't something I think I've directly mentioned. It definitely is nice, but uh, it's something that, like, you don't really directly notice when playing one walker but it definitely like if you look into it it get, generates you a shit ton of chi over the course of your run it is actually quite nice and just the way that healing orbs work and stuff like that so he has like a lot of good notes in there about one walker leveling um and he he is able to say pretty confidently right like one walker is one of if not the best leveling specs in the game because he knows for a fact that you know i've done my world records with one walker right so i have a uh, I basically proved that for him, so you can uh, throw that on the guide, right? And, I don't know, I, I'm not expecting every single Wowhead guide to have, like, a whole fucking thesis written up about, like, leveling, but it does feel like a lot of them are excessively copy-paste to the point where I just, I, I question whether they're actually useful for anyone. Uh, let's see, we need a high-pass sparring ring. All right, now I have to watch the little cutscene. <sighs> All right. I think, yeah, maybe if... The best thing that I could do to save time, outside of, like, Darkmoon Fair and stuff, is cutting down on a lot of that downtime that I spent in between dungeons early on. Because if I had spent more time when I was queuing for BC dungeons, instead of just dicking around in Stormwind, I had been, like, out doing quests in Eastfell Walking Camp and like killing rares and stuff. Then what I could have done before uh before starting WAD and before um whatchamacallit, before uh heading to Lock Modan, is I could have kind of swung into Red Ridge and Lock Modan or Red Ridge and Duskwood and killed a lot of like the really easy to find rares, even if I wasn't doing a lot of quests there, and that would have given me like a really nice chunk of experience. And I also could have grabbed the um Midsummer bonfires, if that's something I was also doing. But it is crazy that I'm keeping up this pace despite having wasted a pretty significant amount of time throughout this run. Uh, let's see. I want to round up a lot of mobs and I want to get them very low. All right. All right. We got Gorn Tooth, so we don't need to worry about Gorn anymore. Uh, I'm just going to kill these mobs real quick. I'm going to do Desperate Prayer. Then Mind Games. And how long do I have? I have 19 seconds. I'm going to do Shadow Crash over there. A Grunling Skill, Gorn Tooth. Uh... Bond Night Bloom. Okay, we got three. Yeah, I would say overall that was a pretty good showing for Affliction Ridge. Uh, I got a decent amount of kills. I got uh, three trophies. That's like pretty average. I mean, what is it's five is the most you can get, I believe. So, especially got a Shadow Priest, right? Like, I averaged three trophies on Windwalker and Guardian Druid. So, that is that is like a 
perfectly fine affliction rage. In fact, um, I use uh, uh, in in my Windwalker or in my Windwalker and oh, words uh, Windwalker and Brewmaster Monk leveling video, like comparing the specs and stuff like that. Uh, the three tests that I use are General Margrave. Uh, why did I not get the quest? It says. Yeah, I can't pick up that quest. I don't know, that's weird. I think I already have it, and it's just a visual bug. Yeah, it's just a visual bug. Um, but yeah, General Margrave and Silver Pine Forest for dealing with, um, basically, dealing with elites that hit hard. So that's like a way to test the spec's ability to deal damage and survive incoming damage, especially at a low level. Then the Yetimus test is... Uh, or as I like to call it, the Yeta Litmus Test, is a spec's ability to deal single target damage and um, survive, you know, high incoming damage from Yetimus. And then finally, the Affliction Ridge Test, which is basically just a spec's ability to move around quickly and kill things quickly. And I think uh, those kind of test all of the pillars of leveling, right? You know, being able to do efficient damage while also staying alive, being able to solo heavy elites. So one tests AoE damage and survivability, the other tests single target damage and survivability, and then the final one is like, okay, it tests all of them. It's like, how fast can you get around? How fast can you just kill mobs and rack up your kill counter? And then obviously, Affliction Ridge, while a lot of specs don't really struggle with its survivability-wise, especially compared to General Margrave and Yetimus, some specs will. If you're pulling too much and you're like a squishy clothy, you may need to slow down just because you'll be taking way too much damage. And it's like, it's easy to deal with, right? So like, General Margrave and Yetimus sometimes will just kill you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Affliction Ridge will never kill you, provided you don't like make any colossal mistakes, but what Affliction Ridge will do is it will force you to slow down so that you don't die. You'll have to be like, all right, I'm pulling way too aggressively. I got to stop chain pulling this entire place and I got to lose a little bit of efficiency. And in a speed running environment or a speed leveling environment, slowing down in Affliction Ridge or just slowing down anywhere, which is why I think it's a good test. Uh, but specifically in Affliction Ridge, it means you're getting less quest items. But also, generally speaking, you know, if you have to slow down, you're losing time. And the entire point is to test, you know, a specs efficacy for uh, speed leveling. So, uh, let me spend more talent points. Put one there. Put one there. I need to put two there. All right. And mind games. Fuck. I was gonna try to read that cast. Wow. Yeah, Mind Games hits pretty fucking hard. Oh, and I should also note, I think I've probably said that already, but feel free to backseat me in the comments. I think I said that I expect people to backseat me in the comments, but like, for something like this, which I have no experience on, absolutely, if there's something that you're like, oh, I play a Shadow Priest and there's this thing that you should be doing that will get you like a lot of damage, please let me know. Because, um... What was it? There was something that somebody was telling me about. And I I forget. It wasn't for Shadow Priest, but it was for something else. Um, Rogue, yeah. So uh, somebody in my Discord um, told me something about Rogue, like a, a little trick that you can do uh, with one of the specs that actually I was like, oh, that sounds really interesting. Like if I manage to get that to work and it works the way you say it does, that actually may end up making Rogue significantly faster. Like, it sounds like I was playing it wrong. And, right, like, no matter how you play Rogue, like, nobody's under any delusions that Rogue is going to end up being fast. I think at this point it's pretty safe to say Rogue is the slowest leveling spec in the game. But what they brought up, and unfortunately I don't remember the exact details of it, I just remember that I thought it sounded interesting. But I remember seeing that and thinking, oh, that actually might make Rogue a bit more efficient than I initially thought. The type of thing where you're like, okay, yeah, this could maybe bring it up from, like, a D-tier leveling spec to a C-tier leveling spec. Or, like, B-tier in the hands of a really, 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 really good player of it. That type of thing. So, I mean, honestly, I'm already thinking that Shadow Priest is feeling good. So, 
it's not like you're going to manage to convince me that Shadow Priest isn't bad, because I'm already convinced that Shadow Priest is significantly better than it used to be. Now, this is leaps and bounds more efficient. It still has like some problems, like it is a cloth caster, right? There's nothing you can really do to change that. Um, it still has some turrety stuff. It's a little bit squishier than the other specs. It doesn't have amazing mobility. It has decent mobility, definitely better than it did before. Like enough mobility that I would say it is not a wheelchair spec by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's like... It's just a regular movement spec. It's not Windwalker or Druid levels of fast, but that's fine. I mean, there's a reason why Windwalker and Druid are super fucking good, right? So the only thing that I'm now like at higher levels finding is that I'm having to single target down mobs considerably more. And like my single target speed actually feels pretty good. I don't have any major problems with that. The only thing is it doesn't seem like I really have an amazing ability to kill multiple mobs at the same time unless I have a lot of cooldowns. Like, if I have cooldowns, I can do massive AoE burst. But outside of my cooldowns, whereas, like, Windwalker always has Fists of Fury and stuff like that, so no matter what, it you know, Fists of Fury isn't a cooldown. You just have it up, like, all the fucking time. So you can always just cleave down massive packs of mobs with relative ease. And Guardian Druids just have, like, everything. Guardian Druids have 100% uptime on, like, ridiculous AoE and single target. They're just nuts. Uh, it's the reason why I think I've kind of... I've hinted in this run, but also directly stated in my previous run, that I'm probably going to be going back to Guardian Druid for world record attempts. I believe, upon a lot of consideration, that Guardian's actually faster than Windwalker. Not by a ton. Um, I think it is still very, very, very close. But I think um, one of the main advantages of Windwalker is that it was able to play Volpera or Dark Iron, which were major time saves with riding training learning. And now that's no longer a factor. So I think Guardian Druid stonks. Uh, they may have already been better. I'm not entirely sure. I think I undervalued them a little bit after the nerfs. Because I was, I was kind of dooming on Guardian Druid um, after it got nerfed in Dragonflight launch. But Blizzard has been slowly rolling that back and giving them cool shit. So now they're actually looking pretty spicy. Uh, what can I do? I can do mind games. I should probably do this. They're taking quite a lot of damage. Oh, shit. What was that? Yeah, and this thing, just the fact that, you know, as a caster, it's not a massive loss, right? But the fact that, you know, I'm getting knocked around and my casts are getting interrupted, you know, it's only a few seconds of DPS loss, but it is one of those things where when melee DPS don't need to deal with that at all, and they can just sit there and do in their entire rotation with, like, basically zero interruption, and just by nature of being a caster, when you're unable to kill everything within your instant casts, it just slows you down. That That is just a fact. That's not Shadow Priest. That is Warlock. That is Mage. That is everything. It's one of the reasons why, though I have said before that Mage is a good leveling spec, there's a reason why Mage is not Windwalker at all. Ma Mage is... Mage and maybe Affliction Lock are up there in, like, the best casters. Arcane is probably still the best uh, caster leveling. Um, Affliction Lock is maybe the second best caster leveling, at least that i found. And I think, I don't know, it, it's hard to really give it to Shadow Priest, because this is good. But I would say this brings Shadow Priest squarely into the average of specs. Um, it doesn't really have, like, that oomph factor. Because the thing about Warlock, when I, when I was playing Affliction, is, like, I was killing things reasonably fast at low levels. Um, I think Shadow Priest, and especially like because of Holy Nova, was killing things maybe a little bit faster at lower levels than I was in my Warlock. But the real thing about Affliction that took me by surprise is at these levels, where you can see that Shadow Priest is starting to slow down a little bit, and I'm having to like single target down mobs. If you watch my Affliction run from like six months ago, I was just 
pulling gigantic packs of mobs and just erasing them with Seed of Corruption. So at the same time when Shadow Priest is slowing down, Affliction is just taking the fuck off. And I think that's like a big difference that I'm noticing. It's that they're both really good in the early game, but whereas Affliction just spikes massively and honestly gets better as it gets more stuff, Shadow Priest becomes a little bit more... A little bit more like single target focused, which I think is in large part due to Holy Nova falling off. Like, I'm sure that, you know, if you had time to do all of your setup and stuff like I've seen, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Shadow Priest is bad in like endgame content because I have seen the Shadow Priests in my guilds and they absolutely fucking blast. It is crazy how much damage they're able to put out in Mythic Plus. So I know for a fact that Shadow Priests can do ridiculous damage if they're able to just sit there and like go to town, but I think that's the key thing there, it, being able to uh, sit there in turret instead of being forced to constantly move around, because, you know, leveling. Uh, let me try to get this. Okay, do I get the Basilisk? I get Basilisk skill. Nice. Okay, now I need to... I need to get the Elemental one. Really don't want to miss out on that. So this is the only real good opportunity to get the Elemental thing. Yeah, the Elementals are always a bit spread out, and I don't have any great ways to round them up. And all my AoE is, like, kind of clumped. Oh, no. I'm just going to go kill a bunch of little elemental guys, rippling steam furies. Just on the off chance, I don't know if it dropped off those mobs. Yeah, I'm not sure. It There's still mobs back there that I haven't looted, and it's possible that one of them had the uh, the quest item. Fingers crossed that they did. There's a decent chance... But if they didn't, that is very unfortunate. Alright, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Quest item. Let's go. Yes! Elemental crystal. Okay. We are cruising now. Uh, oh yeah, this is... This is good pace. This is some really good pace. I've already fallen behind my run from yesterday, but... The fact that we're close, despite all of the uh, fuckery that has gone on, is uh, it's nice. And I was expecting the Shadow Priest run to be like five hours. So, the fact that it's going to be... Uh, unless I manage to really fuck up within the next, like, 20 minutes. Uh, if I can't get uh, four levels in 20 minutes, especially the four easiest levels in 20 minutes, I've really done something wrong here so uh yeah I, i'm probably gonna get sub four hours which is still pretty good that would make this my third fastest run to date admittedly uh you know third fastest run with the 50 percent buff so uh, but i i think all things considered still pretty nice All these guys up. I think the best part about Shadow Priest by far, though, that I was really not expecting is the fact that at no point have I felt like I'm actually in danger. You know, at most I've been like, okay, I need to go and press like a defensive so I don't die here. Um, but it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to die. I need to find a way to save myself. It is, oh, my health is low. I just need to press one of the many, many survivability buttons that I have, which I always got the impression of Shadow Priest that it was like really squishy. And I think it used to be. I'm 99% sure that it used to be really squishy and that it didn't have most of these tools. But now it basically feels like it has all of the survivability tools of Holy Priest, which just kind of shores up all of its weaknesses. It has the early game AoE of Holy Priest. It is the survivability of Holy Priest. It is just, it is effectively just Holy Priest, old Holy Priest and Shadow, 
in the uh the same build with additional AoE burst damage. Because it used to be that you would just rot shit down and that made it really slow. Because like pure dot classes are not great. And that definitely it's still dot focused, right? That hinders it a little bit. But it is uh it is focused enough around Oh. Don't let me die right after I was shit talking the game. Admittedly, I went in here with like all of my shit on CD, almost died for it, and I still managed to get out. Like, that's the kind of situation where if I had done that on like a lot of other specs, I would have just died. And Shadow Priest, I was able to get out of it. So getting out of a situation like that where I I was by all uh I, I deserve to die there. Um yeah, yeah, kinda sweet. Kinda sweet. I uh I did not think I was gonna live. I, I was actually so ready to just be like, oh no, I did not actually just talk shit and get in it there, did I? I fucking hell. And then uh and then it didn't happen. Yeah, Holy Nova spam, still good, even at level 57. Fuck me. I mean, that was obviously really high target count. So I think Holy Nova, the fact that it... Uh, oh, it does do reduce past five targets. Man, that's, that's pretty good if it's reduced after five targets. It feels much better for being a, a five target cap. The mind games here. I do this. I think the the Rhapsody thing really helps it, though. The fact that I can just, like, every so often just use it and it does massively increase damage is really, really helpful. Like, this this talent right here is so fucking broken. <laughs> I don't want to, like, get Shadow Priest nerfed, but the fact that that singular talent, Rhapsody, I think has carried this run more than anything it's it's a little bit ridiculous especially for how early on you get it like if that was later in the tree once again sorry shadow priest i swear i'm not trying to get you nerfed on purpose but it really does feel like that should be later in the tree that is just so obscenely powerful especially for leveling i am curious though because i haven't seen i haven't seen any builds for shadow priest running that um What's the reason behind that? Does Holy Nova just really fall off hard at max level compared to the value I'm getting out of it now? Because I'm surprised that, like, with the damage I'm seeing from it, I would think that at least weaving in one Holy Nova at max stack seems like it would be good, right? Like, 5 plus target AoE, max stack Rhapsody Holy Nova. Is it just that, like, you can't afford to put points into that? Like, are there other... Are there other utility or survivability options that you're forced to spend talent points on that I can just kind of forego? Because I, I've skipped out on a lot of the really big survivability stuff, which I think actually says a lot about Shadow Priest survivability, right? When I have opted out of a lot of the survivability recommendations on the guide and just said, fuck it, I'm going to live anyway, and I felt like extremely healthy despite that. That's a, that's a really good sign. But I, I'm guessing that for like high level Mythic Plus, a lot of those options are like borderline mandatory if you don't want to get one shot. And maybe that's why you can't afford to take Rhapsody. But man, this feels... It just feels way too good to pass up on. I don't know. Uh, Where are the boots? I just got boots. There's the boots. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do this quest. I can do, because what I can do, so here's the plan. I was wondering if I bail now and go back to do the big turn in, but no, I think I'm almost at the point where I should do the big turn in because I should get champion's honor and then I can get Ogron and I don't have Gron Eye. Yeah, I have Gronling Scale, Bond Eye Bloom and Gorin Tooth, but I'm missing Gron Eye. So I will actually get a benefit by using by using it here. And then I can get the yeah, I can get Ogron Tooth, Gron Eye, 
and that's all I'll be able to get here. But then what I can do is I can complete the... There's a nice chunk of quests right around here, and then I can avoid doing the... Um, I can avoid doing the final, like, Rexar Showdown quest and just skip that. Uh, but I can do this one, Canyon, or what? what is it? Uh, Valley of Destruction. So I can do that and uh, get a decent chunk of experience. That's a good way to kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to do the, the AoE Root. Angelic Feather. And then I grab this and use that tunnel. Yeah, I also like how Shadow Priest has like an AoE Fear, an AoE Root. It's pretty flexible. It's another thing where like the leveling builds on Wowhead don't include Void Tendrils. Like, what? <laughs> You're leveling and you don't want an AoE Root that doesn't break with damage from what I can tell? Like, I was DPSing mobs early while they were rooted. Uh, rooting all enemies within 8 yards for 20 seconds or until the Tendril is killed. Like, that is... On a one-minute cooldown, that's such an effective kiting tool. Like, that's the type of thing that, you know... I feel like if you did a bare minimum amount of, like, research into leveling and, like, what makes casters good at leveling, it's like, all casters need to be good at kiting to be effective levelers. And that is such an amazing tool for kiting. That's just, like, a no-brainer pickup right there. All right, so I go over here. And then... Uh, was I supposed to talk to Nisha first? For the quests. No, I don't think so. Hold on, I'm confused. Is it doing that thing again where it doesn't load in? Or no, I, I think I'm just... I, I'm like a few too many steps ahead in the quest line. And I'm just confusing myself for absolutely no reason. I think that's what's going on here. Oh, interrupting shout. That's actually... That's problematic now. I actually have spell casts that I can have interrupted. Ooh, I need to pop this... Oh. Before I accidentally one-shot a mob, I think I just got it in time. Come on, Oberon Tooth. Alright, fuck it. Oh no! The fact that I lived that, dude, oh my god. The fact that Shadow Priest lived that, that was... I mean, I, I played that well after the recovery. Okay, at least I got the, the Ogron one. Didn't get the Gron one. Unlucky. I probably should have killed the Gron before I went in and fought the Ogron. But it's, it's really not the end of the world if that happens. We're already more than set, because by the time I get out of here, I'll be so close to 60. And then all of these quests, more than enough to just ding me to 61. Shit. Ah, shit. Shit, 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 shit. Alright. Let me throw all this stuff on him. Why did I, I? I saw the cast going off, and then I was like, oh, I can't cast... Was I, I was like, I can't cast Mind Blast because he's about to interrupt me. So I'm like, oh, well, I'll use my other spell, Mind Spike, instead. Like, fucking idiot. Ugh. I don't know what I was thinking. Alright. And then we take the Gorin Tunnel. And I got all these quests. Then I get... I think the these Rexar quests should take me to about here. 
uh, about like three bars off, give or take. It, it, it'll either be two or three bars off, I suspect, after I hand in all these quests. Then Valley of Destruction should take me up to level 60, and then the last few quests should give me the entire final level. This and um, isn't there supposed to be another quest? I'm thinking of the spirit of Bony Zuck one. What is seeking the scout? Huh. Yeah, because normally you get spirit of Bony Zuck right here. That's an additional quest. Uh, I'd imagine there has to be an alliance equivalent at some points. Because I doubt the Horde just get an entire extra quest worth of experience. I never really thought of that. Eh. Yeah, I'm just not sure where the Alliance equivalent is. It's possible that the Alliance equivalent is like much later in the zone after I already recommend stopping in Gorgrond, which would actually make it really not great. But yeah, it's it's like one quest, right? Obviously, that's another plus in the Horde's favor, but... Alliance also has a few things going for them. Did not mean to hit Shadow or Death there. Okay, two more Gron and a handful of eggs. This is almost enough eggs. Yeah, Holy Nova is just so good for that. Just a bunch of little mobs that are already rotting out. You just slam them with the Holy Nova. It also, there's like a little, um, I think it still works. I saw a talent interaction here. Uh, for 12 seconds after casting Power Word Shield, you do 10% additional damage with Holy Nova. Right? So literally just... Oh, I meant to take Halo earlier. I remember thinking I wanted to take Halo the moment I unlocked this final row. And I instead took Mind Games. Um, yeah, not a huge deal. This is seven and eight. E even more active abilities. Jesus Christ. Void Torrent. I feel like that's supposed to do more damage. I probably missed synergy with it or something. I don't know. I don't have enough uh, time left to figure out how that works because we're almost done with the run. Alright, we hand this in, this gets us to 60. And then remember, the timer does not stop, because this run, I am simulating what it'll actually be like when you're running through this. Let me talk to Burchis, though. I should do at least that quest. Yeah, we're almost there, anyway. Just on the off chance this last batch doesn't get me all the way. It should. But all I care about is I want the sub 4. So, you know. All right. So now I'm going to go hand in all those quests. And if I am slightly off, we do Rangari in the red. So yeah, in case you missed it earlier and you're confused why I haven't stopped, Chromie time scales up to level 61 now. An additional one level. It, there is a reason for it. It is to smooth out the transition into Dragonflight content. Which means that if you're leveling characters from 60 to 70, I genuinely do recommend enabling Chromie Time for the singular level and doing, like, Wad Intro or something. Just something random in my leveling route just to get that one level. Because it'll be faster than doing Dragonflight, guaranteed. 
Um, Okay, we're stopping the timer here. Uh, here we go. Uh, never mind, I'm not going to 61. Uh, Chromie time now scales is now supposed to scale to level 61. The zone levels and the mob scale, but you guys forgot to adjust the quest experience. It stops giving scaled XP after you hit level 60, making it impossible to progress further within Chromi time zones. Within Chromi time. All right. Ran out of characters. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. See, here's a good thing. At least I tried to do that because if I didn't at least try to do level 61, we never would have known that Blizzard forgot to actually adjust the quest experience and defeated the entire purpose of having Chromie Time scale up to level 61. So yeah, apparently the run is done. Uh, sub four hours, pretty good. Uh, was a decent ways off getting... Um, or beating my other times. Uh, but, I mean, the earlier part of this run was a total fucking mess. Which wasn't like... It wasn't like it was unintentional. I knew it was a mess. It was just one of those things where I kind of was strapping myself in for the Shadow Priest part to be like a mess. I was like, oh yeah, Shadow Priest shit's gonna be a disaster anyway. I might as well have fun with the Holy Priest stuff and not try to sweat it too much. And then once again, out of nowhere, ended up being a way better run than I thought. Uh, yeah, this was, this was, uh, really sick. I'm pretty sure I can still get, like, a decent clickbait title thumbnail thing out of this, um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, make sure to tune into the stream tomorrow, uh, Saturday, uh, July 1st, yeah, it is July 1st, right? Yeah, Saturday, yeah, Saturday, July 1st at 11 a.m., and also, if you haven't done so already, make sure to vote for the spec that you want to see played tomorrow. I'm going to be... I won't, like, have an official time for closing the poll, but basically, the poll closes whenever I wake up in the morning before the stream, check the results, and then begin preparation. Because obviously, I'm not going to close the poll right before the stream, because I need to start doing setup. I need to make sure all my heirlooms are in order. I need to make sure if it's a spec that I've never played before, like, if Frost Mage wins then I need to make sure that I actually research Frost Mage so I know what the fuck I'm doing at a basic level, right? You know, I what I did here with Shadow Priest is you still got to see me figure out how it worked in, you know, real time, but I did at least look up the talent, so I'm not sitting here going, hmm, what does this do? What does this do? And, you know, I actually could have the flow going. And uh, I think it worked out well. Uh, I had a lot of fun recording this one. Shadow Priest definitely way, 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 way better than I initially thought. I think at one point in the future, it might be fun to do a, a full only Holy Priest run. I am curious to see how that would stand up. I would imagine that later on it would start to fall off just because it would start to lose a lot of its damage options and you'd only be offered healing stuff. But I think it is really interesting how both Holy and Disc, like in my monk overview video i didn't even mention when or miss weaver i literally said don't play miss weaver moving on because there's just no advantage to it it offers absolutely nothing that the other specs don't do but better and it's similar like resto druid just don't play resto druid while leveling moving on nothing that resto druid does can't be done by other specs in fact the entire point of resto druid is a lot of times you are boomkin weaving or cat weaving and it's like at that point just play one of the other DPS specs. It literally is just better. And the only reason you would theoretically play uh, a healing spec is if there, you can't tank, right? But it's like, well, if you're trying to do dungeons, just play Brewmaster. Obviously, if you enjoy Mistweaver and you want to play it in dungeons, do that. But if you're aiming for speed leveling and you want the fastest times possible, well, tanks get the fastest cues. And Brewmaster isn't necessarily hard to play. Neither is Guardian Druid. So if you don't care about, like, 
what you play while leveling and you just want to level as fast as possible and you want to try any spec, right? Like level as a tank. Leveling as a tank through dungeons or at least using a tank spec to complete the dungeon section of the leveling route, just to be clear, right? That'll always be the fastest. And then obviously outside of that, it's a case by case basis. Like obviously Guardian Druid is faster than Feral and Boomkin. But Windwalker is faster than Brewmaster when it comes to like open world questing. So in those cases, no matter what you're doing, there's a better alternative. But obviously in the case of Priest, right? A, you don't have a tank spec, so you need to play healer to get fast cues. But also, even if you had like a Priest tank spec, Holy would probably still be viable. Because that is something that no other class can do, right? Play a healer and just keep the entire group topped up while also doing maximum damage. That is just wild. The performance in dungeons. Uh, Rest of Druid can't do that. Mistweaver sure shit can't do that. Um, I'm not sure about Rest of Shaman. I think Rest of Shaman might be decent for dungeons purely because, once again, you don't have a tank option. So, since you don't have the ability to switch into a tank, uh, obviously Rest of Shaman is going to get you the best cues. I think it's probably, probably more like a discount Ellie still at that level, but I think you could from what I remember, do decent stuff as a Resto Shaman. The only problem is Holy Nova is a unique spell, and that is, like, one of the few things that does both ridiculous damage and ridiculous healing in the same button press. So, you don't really need to do both. Resto Shaman, you definitely don't have stuff that passively heals while you do damage. So, you do kind of need to at least throw healing surges or chain heals or whatever while you do your damage rotation. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's a solid option. And then what else is there? Holy Paladin? Yeah, Holy Paladin is another one of those, like, literally just play Prop Paladin. Uh, I'm going to look into Rhett. I actually, you know what? I'm going to put Retribution Paladin. I think some people are going to be mad because I think there's a decent chance Rhett ends up winning the poll. But I have never done a Retribution Paladin run. I've done a million Paladin runs. I've always only done it as Prop. Because quite frankly, why wouldn't you play Prop Paladin, right? It's a tank. Meaning for dun the dungeon part, it is just the best. It is right up there with uh, Guardian Druid as the best dungeon tank. And I would say it is actually probably better than Guardian Druid at dungeon tanking. Guardian Druid probably does a little bit more damage, but Prop Paladin is just genuinely unkillable, even from a low level. And then in open world content, it is pretty much as tanky and as lethal in terms of damage dealt as Guardian Druid. The only thing that it suffers from is it suffers from lack of mobility. That Retribution also suffers from that. So I just don't see a universe in which Rhett ends up being better than Prot. It probably has slightly better single target damage. So maybe for things like Yetimus, it's slightly better. Um, but still, it's like Prot has some of the best AoE in the fucking game. It is ridiculous, especially at low levels, right? Like, obviously, when you start getting, like, endgame gear and stat scaling and stuff like that. But the fact that with, um, what's it called, Tears Enforcer... On large AoE pulls at level 30 or whatever, Prop Paladin just does ridiculous splash damage with its shields. It's it's just so good. It's so, 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 so broken. Prop Paladin is just fucking amazing. It's also just so fun to play. I love playing Prop Paladin. Really, 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 really fun spec. Um, anyways, I've, I've ranted for like almost 10 minutes after the run actually ended. So I'm going to stop myself here. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to tune into tomorrow's stream. I'm curious to see what you guys end up voting for. I'm probably going to put a lot of different options on there. So, you know, I'll have to prepare for everything. Um, but yeah, catch you later. Uh, hope you enjoyed.